Hello, this is Michael from The Michael Papinchak Show. First, I want to thank you guys for listening and for all of your support. Please go to my website, tmpspodcast.com. You will see the pictures for Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, SoundCloud. Please click, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, all of that good stuff. TMPS 123 is a show that we've been working on for a while. Jason, uh, our buddy Chris, and myself have been putting together uh, the lists of our top 10 favorite or best American bands. And we have some great lists for you. Um, Unfortunately, something happened with my setup and it did not record us using the microphones. I believe it recorded us using the microphone on my computer. And with Jason and, and Chris not near the computer, the sound is not phenomenal. But it is a really good show. Please listen anyway. Uh, and again, I'll try to avoid this in the future, obviously, but it is a really good show. Chris is super knowledgeable about rock and roll and rock and roll bands and rock and roll history, and his list is very unique. Jason and I also have fantastic lists. So again, thank you so much for listening, and I apologize for the poor quality of TMPS 123. You're listening to The Michael Papinjack Show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to TMPS 123, a special show. We have Jason in the studio, and last week we had Chris on the show, but now we have Chris, but a different Chris on the show. And we are going to be talking about the greatest American bands of all time. Now, Chris, that microphone actually goes like that. I talk into mine here, but you're going to talk into it. So, yeah. This right here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I gotcha. know. It's different. Yep. I'm actually thinking about getting this mic for all for all of oh, them. Oh, really? Yeah, just, just updating all of them, oh, too. Because this is like the studio microphone of all studio microphones, the S, the Shure SMB. Or the Shure... Oh, my God. I just forgot what it's called. I think it's underneath there. SM7B. There it is. Okay. I think Rogan uses them. I'm trying to be like Joe Rogan. Naturally. Naturally. Oh, that's a great song. Well, they're from England, though. Mr. Fletcher passed away yesterday. Yeah. Wait, who passed away? The keyboardist for Depeche Mode. Yeah. Oh. So I, I gave a little. How old was he? Oh, was 60s. 60s. And, 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 Ray. and Ray Liotta. 67. 67. Yeah. What the heck? That's crazy. What's going on here? Well, thanks for having me back. It's been a while since I was Yes, here. yes. Uh, we, we, we've been waiting to do this one for a while. Yeah, so we have been talking about doing this show for quite some time. Uh, Jason and I were out at Sensi's one night, and I don't know how it came up. We were talking about the great... So you always hear about like, the greatest bands of all time. It's the right. Beatles and the Stones. And it's like, well, it's always these, these, in, these, these like British bands, right? Yeah. And I was like, well, what's the greatest American band? You know, and and so it's so we thought we got to do this show now, Chris. You have a, uh, I believe a, uh, like uh, kind of like a rock and roll journalistic background. Is this correct? Correct. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that before we get into our list. Sure. So I guess it was when I was in college, right? So I went for broadcast journalism, but my interest really isn't in sports, which everybody there was, right? Everybody wanted to work at the paper, report on the games and stuff. And I was like, well, why don't I interview rock stars, right? So I started a radio show and- uh, You started a radio show? Yeah, so up there, like you could have like a half hour radio show, you play your, your songs and whatnot. Okay. Um, but I would start going to concerts and I would get to know different promoters. Yeah. And then I would say, hey, I have a radio show or I have a blog online. And I would get to know people, and then they would say, you know, you can, you know, apply for a press pass, try and get an interview with the artist. Okay. So one of the first people I interviewed was Air Supply. Oh, all right. At Rivers Casino, right? And I wasn't old enough to gamble, but I was in there interviewing the band. So if you go on YouTube, I think my video with them has like close to 100,000 hits. Really? It was 10 years ago, right? But we yeah. go down, and once I got like one big name like them, then that's how I got, like, Ted Nugent, I got the Bangles, I got Samantha Fox, like, all oh. these artists, right, from the 80s, and it was really cool. Okay. And that's how I met Eddie Murphy. First off, Kona is looking lovingly <laughs> into Chris's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. Oh. <laughs> this is why, yeah, this is why this show needs to be 
videotape. Well, one day I'm gonna have a, a video of yeah. yeah because Kona is really like a person. hysterical, sitting here like a person staring into Chris's eyes <laughs> so lovingly. Uh, but anyway, so you sorry I, I interrupted, but you did bring up Eddie Money, right? Which you kind of had a uh, friendship, I right. guess. Yeah, we definitely. Um, you know, first started off me just interviewing him uh, through a promoter, and then Eddie liked my work. Like they would actually send artists uh, my work. Through okay. The, uh, um, press managers and whatnot, just like the band Heart. I had a press pass anytime I wanted because they sent the sisters Anna and Nancy Wilson my review of their show, and they're like, "Chris can come anytime he wants." Wow. Unwritten so pass anytime I want. Same with Eddie. Eddie thought enough of my work that he put it on, and he would promote it on his own site. So okay. he's like, "Oh, you're the rock and roll kid. Yeah, come on back, Chris. You know, <laughs> sit around hanging out. He, I got to go to his tour bus, hang out with him. Oh my God. And I would never, like, I would always buy a ticket, but he would always upgrade me. He's like, oh, I got you tickets. How many you need? You need two? <laughs> you know, you're just a cool dude, man, you know? And we'd have dinner together, like, with the band. So the band's in between sets, because they would usually do sh two shows, right? Okay. Like, like, early evening and then a late night show, depending on where they were played on the venue. And the one time, there was an extra plate of food, and he goes, hey, Chris, you hungry? I have a plate of food. Yeah. <laughs> because he's from Brooklyn. He's got yeah. a deep, raspy yeah. voice, you know, because he smoked forever. Yeah. Um, but Eddie was really cool, man. Like You know, it's so weird because these performers, they rely on their voices for... <laughs> <laughs> they all smoke yeah. and do drugs and drink. I mean, I think the the greatest example is uh, Aerosmith. Yeah, his voice when he now he can still sing, but you compare um, what's their famous song? Oh, Dream On. Dream On. That voice compared to now is totally different, yeah. and it just takes cigarettes, drugs, and alcohol to wear a voice down. I mean, hey, Elton John. Uh, he did so much drugs that he, he had to have surgery. He went from a tenor to a baritone. Yeah. So if you listen to Elton John in his heyday, um, and you listen to him now, a lot of the songs are taken down a third or like a minor sure. third. So like yeah. in like opera, right? Um, there's something called like German lead, like German song. And the songs can be really sung by anyone. And, you know, you know, they're kind of just these, like, they were meant to be played, like, in a parlor, in, like, a house with a piano and everything. And so, like, the you know, you have the, like, key for, like, the, like, tenor. And then, like, the key for the baritone is a minor third lower. So, you know, you listen to Elton John now, they're all down a minor third. Because he can't hit those notes anymore because he screwed up his voice with the drugs. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't take much. I mean, the 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 voice is pretty resilient, but I mean, enough cocaine and <laughs> you know, but. yeah. It's uh, so this is really this. Well, obviously, we wanted you to be on the show Thank since you, you yeah. really have a, a a kind of a much more intimate relationship with this subject with right. with with bands in general. One of my best stories. Two good stories, right? So when I did my radio show. Bands that weren't touring locally, I would have them call into the station. Sure. And the professors couldn't figure out how I was getting all these guys because they like grew up with these bands, right? They weren't in their heyday now, but like um, like John Parr or the band Warren. So I had um, Eric Turner from the band Warren, who co-founded the band. I had him call in, and we did it live. So I didn't do it to tape or anything like okay. that. And I'm in the studio doing it myself. And Eric, he, we're talking about something. He uses the F-bomb. He goes, fuck. We're live there. And I'm like, shit. <laughs> now, it's a college radio. Awesome. Yeah. And nobody was really listening. Yeah. But we could have been fined like 10 grand or something. Had yeah. somebody filed a report. Yeah. Um, and then another time I had this band, uh, Ice House. They're from Australia. Okay. They had a, a, one big hit here in the U.S. that they wrote with uh, John Oates, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. So they were in Australia and I had him call uh, Edinburgh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. It was a different day because of the time zone. It was oh, like 23 hours different. Sure. Right? And I was, that's so yeah. cool. Somebody on the other side of the world. Yeah. Well, they're, they're huge in Australia. Oh, yeah. They're like Crocodile Dundee down there, yeah. right? Here, like wonder, but you call cool. that a knife? <laughs> yeah. This is a knife. So it was cool like that because, you know, I would get these people calling. They were just happy to kind of talk and, yeah. like, re-expose themselves to a different area, a different region mm -hmm. again, you know. So it, I learned a lot from those guys. Yeah, you know, I've always been interested in uh, radio. Yeah. And uh, when I was in college, we you know, we had our college radio station. Oh. And I just never – it was something that I always wanted to do. But I was always in 
like productions. I was always, my evenings were spent rehearsing and this and that. And it's like, there just wasn't enough, like weren't enough like hours in the day. Yeah. Cause that would be the best place to start. You just have a college radio show. I mean, you it's, just learn. Yeah, it's free. You yeah. Go in and here's a half hour. To do what you want. Exactly. Don't fuck on air. And yeah. Like, yeah. Exactly. And uh, I kind of look back and wish I would have uh, taken advantage of that. But again, people say, "Oh, you live in New York City. You know, I used to be a jazz drummer. Like, why didn't you play jazz?" And I'm like, "Because I'm trying to be an opera singer. Yeah. There's only so many hours in the day. Plus, I'm getting a master's in opera." That guy's getting a master's in jazz drumming. Uh, he kind of has one up on me. I mean, I'm a pretty decent drummer, but I, I'm nowhere near to have the technical ability because these guys are literally studying this. Plus, I don't have time. Yeah. I can't, I can't, I mean, and like, what? I, where am I going to get a drum set? And I mean, like, it, it, I have an apartment in Manhattan. Like, how, how am I going to practice? Like, you know what I mean? It just didn't make any sense. One of my favorite stories about a drummer that walked away from a band was Chevy Chase. So, again, I was in college. I'm reading all these stories about different bands and whatnot. He was the drummer for Steely Dan. And he goes, you know what, guys? I don't think I'm good enough. And he walked away, and then he became Chevy Chase Saturday Night Live. But isn't that crazy? Like, different people that were involved in something in the beginning, and then they're still famous. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's start. Yeah. Chevy Chase yeah. was a drummer for Steely Dan. For Steely Dan. Before they were Steely Dan. So, like, sure. they were still putting the band together. He came in and... I don't even know that he played the uh, drums. Yeah, but kind of like your case, right? Like, so yeah. He was, he was good, but he knew he wasn't good enough compared to the people that were coming in. That yeah. Could, you know, take them to the well, you know, I was at a point in uh, high school where I could have been a jazz drummer or an opera singer. And yeah, I couldn't do both. I couldn't major in both. And I kind of had a pick. Mm -hmm. And I chose my college... Oh, my sister is blowing up my phone. It, you know, no one texts me all day. And then I'm, I'm trying to do this show. And it's just, okay, I put it on silent, not vibrate. It's vibrating over here. And uh, so I went to a college that had a conservatory of music for opera, for jazz, and had a liberal arts college. So if I didn't like opera, I could switch to jazz. And if I didn't want to major in music at all, I can just go to the regular, I could just still get a degree in yeah. history or, or something. Where if you go to like a Juilliard, and you don't want to do music anymore, you have to go, you have to apply to a, to a whole new college. You have to start over. Yeah. And, I, and I knew I would have to get a master's degree. And I thought I'll go to a Juilliard type school for the master's. But for my undergrad, like I wanted to be like in a frat, like I wanted like a real college experience. Yeah. Juilliard is not a real college experience. It's, I mean, you're around phenomenal musicians. You're in New York City. The Metropolitan Opera is across the street. You know, your teacher probably plays in the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra or the New York Symphony or something. And it's a really cool experience if you're, if literally the only thing you could ever do is play violin. Yeah. You know what I mean? Your whole life is dedicated to it. Yeah. And, it, and since you've been three years old, that's all you've been doing. Yeah. I like to, I wanted to have kind of Options. a... Uh, yes, I like options, and I wanted to have a college experience with a campus and a quad and a fraternity and, yeah. uh, you know, like the, like the toga parties. And, uh, I mean, I saw, I saw, like, mud wrestling. These girls were in the basement of a frat in a, in a kiddie pool. Like, I wanted I wanted all that. Okay. I, uh, all right, we're getting off topic. Yeah, we're getting way off topic here. Kiddie pools and mud yeah, wrestling. but, you know, I wanted that whole thing. So, yeah. okay, so, like I said, this is a special edition of TMPS. Uh, this is um, our picks for the greatest American bands. Now we're we're kind of we kind of set some parameters here, um, and Jason mentioned a band before we started that I didn't include because one of the members is from England. So it so basically we're talking about bands here, right? Not like Prince. Prince is not a band. Prince is a artist, yeah, yeah, solo. solo artist. Yeah. We're talking about groups, okay? Yeah. And so, so, so we excluded like Bruce Springsteen and the E Street. Band. Yeah, no, yeah, no, that doesn't count. No, no, because when I people think of Bruce Springsteen, you think of Bruce Springsteen. Exactly. Bob exactly. Seger, same thing. Yeah. Um, and then like Fleetwood Mac doesn't count. No, because Fleetwood Mac really is a British band that just happened to include later. Yeah, they absorbed some Americans. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and like so for for some inspiration, I I googled. Um, so we all kept, kind of came to the list on our own. Yes. So we haven't discussed this 
prior. No. So, you know, for me, my list is just more like the bands that pop to mind that have the most influence. To me. Yeah, yeah. Um, it has nothing to do with record sales or yeah. anything like that. Just more <coughs> what speaks to me. Yeah. So I, and I don't know if that's similar to yeah. you, what you guys did. Yeah, but I, I, I Googled the best American bands of all time, thinking I'd find like a Rolling Stone list or something. But there really aren't that many official... I. I, I assumed Rolling Stone might have had their official yeah, list, down, yeah. but I could not find one from them. But um, we, we we spoke. We we're thinking about doing some honorable mentions. At yeah. The end. Well, yeah, yeah um, because the band that Jason has included that has a British member, I would have included, but I thought because of that, yeah, they were not going. But again, you know, guys, this is a this is fun. This, it, is, it is, this yeah. is good time. We're gonna have a good time. We're gonna talk about some bands. Have some sausage. Okay. So. <laughs> um, so who wants to go first? We'll go well, 10 well, to 1. Well, one. Well, yeah, well, okay, so it, yeah. my number 10 is The Grateful Dead. Okay. Oh, my goodness. And wow. now, I am not a connoisseur of their music, uh, but The Grateful Dead, I feel, deserves a top 10 because of just the fact that like, they literally have been touring, you know... <laughs> L literally <laughs> yeah like even without jerry garcia right yeah they have maintained this i mean they've only had one hit yeah touch of gray yeah. is their and one of my favorite songs of all time but it is their only hit but they don't need hits because they're they're the grateful dead well, they have like a call they have this kona take a chill yeah, she, she's yeah. Like really into it. you know i gotta get it's a food that kind of made her yeah yeah, yeah. Are we good here? Oh, I was getting my water. Oh, okay. We should maybe put a bed here. You know what? I maybe, maybe I should get one. I'll get a small one for there. Have to buy something. Maybe no, actually, you know, I have one. I have one in the basement oh, that I could put there. She really needs a lot of love. Yeah, but so for me, I feel like when I think of great bands, you know, a band that literally could only have one hit, but when they tour. They're just, and they're a band that you can, they're, they're a live band. You can record them, I think. Yeah. Like, you, it, like when you go, it's like a sea of microphone antenna mm -hmm. thing. Like, you know what I mean? And it, yeah. they're really a band that can tour for the, forever. Like literally their yeah. children could become the Grateful Dead and still tour. People yeah. are still going to go. Yeah. And that That's really interesting. they just have this incredible presence in American rock and roll history and live performing history that uh i just feel wow. is like almost unparalleled yeah you know for a band that is not a hit machine there it's not like a you know what i mean it's not like cold play or something that just has hit after hit after hit one hit and it's it's their most poppy song i mean it, i mean <laughs> there's a reason why it was their only hit it's like like it's like a regular tune where you know oh you know sorry i just thought of a band very similar that's to that's what happens. You start yeah. these other bands, and like other ones come. Around. I know. I just, I just thought of another band. Okay, so that's my uh, number ten. Okay. Next, right. next. You want me to go? Yeah. Pearl Jam. Ooh. Oh, Pearl Jam. Yeah, I'm a big Pearl Jam fan. Yeah. And I, I've actually been listening to them more recently than in their heyday. Yeah. And, you know, um, a lot of these, they, they reached, like, an older crowd, mm -hmm. which was really interesting because, you know, the whole grunge thing was about reaching these, like, young, you know, impressionable people, right? Yeah. But, like, guys like, you know, like Letterman and stuff, they're, like, big Pro Jam fans. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I'm kind of, maybe I'm missing something. I've never been that big of a fan of them. Yeah. That's why they didn't make my list. I, I understand yeah. their yeah. influence, but yeah. I was trying to consider what I also like. Yeah. A little bit of both. I was trying to balance both. Yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting. They, I actually altered my list, but I, I, I put 10 bands. Yeah. I put 11, or actually 12. Yeah. In no particular <laughs> order. Yeah. And then I'm cut on the fly here. I'm, I'm ranking them. Yeah. Um, yeah. They only moved one spot. But yeah, that, that's my number 10. I'm okay. Just, I'm a fan. Like, they don't really have any bad. They're a band that I can listen to, like, their whole album. Oh, yes. That's, yeah. That's yes. sort of like a, a yeah, the, like the eye test. Yeah. The, the, yeah. You know, that kind of thing. 
I wouldn't be like, oh, I gotta skip four tracks. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the Only first two are good, and then the last one. Yeah. Yeah. No, like all their songs are like really good. Yeah. Okay. And, and 90s music is underrated. It got overshadowed. By it's it. overshadowed. Yeah. 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 It's it's some of it's really good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Chris? All right, so how I went about my list, I try to be objective about it. Okay. So I had four things I was looking for. If the band was innovative, if they had original material, so if they wrote their own stuff, were their own producers, so okay. you know, that carried some weight, their influence on other bands, and then the longevity. So, like, to your point, you're a Grateful Dead had longevity. Yeah. You know, so that was huge. Yeah. So I think you're going to be surprised. Okay. By my well, well, that's why you're on the show. Yeah. So we're expecting some n- kind n- of Number curveball. 10 is the Go Go's. The Go Go's. So here's From the top row. I didn't so, even consider the Go Go's. Think about this, right? So at the time the Go Go's broke big, right? 1981, 1982. I love the Go Go's. So our lips are sealed. They hold this. <laughs> That's the name of the show. <laughs> our lips are sealed. TMPS, our lips so, are sealed. Well, think about this, all right? And this hasn't been achieved to date, all right? They're the only female band to play all their instruments, write their own songs, and have a number one record right out of the gate. They went number one for six consecutive weeks. No one has done that since. Now, wow. female, right? So you would have, like, Pat Benatar. She didn't really write her hits. You know, yeah. Madonna didn't write mm-hmm. her hits. So you have female artists that have, you know, bigger success than the Go-Go's. But they're unique in the fact that they did everything themselves. Yeah. And they went number one. I mean, right out of the gate. Yeah. They were huge. And they kind of brought that, um, that new wave sound to the 80s. I mean, right in the beginning. Because you had disco. You had... You know, hair metal in the 80s, but they were kind of unique in that sound, right? They wow. That new wave. So the Go Go. They were innovative, See? original material, He's influence. A, yeah. The only thing they lacked was longevity. Yeah. They got two good records out. The third one started in the fall. Yeah. And then you had Belinda Carlisle, who went, became successful. Yeah. So you did have some longevity there. But I love the Go Go's. I just thought wow. they were something unique in music wow. history because they got the, they influenced women. You know, different artists to come into the '80s, start writing their own material that they didn't need to have a songwriter. Yeah, you know, write a song. Yeah, be successful. So for me, that was kind of like a, a watershed or a turning point, I should say, for for music. Wow, for music. see the Go Go's didn't Go-Go's. even make my didn't e- wasn't yeah. even on my radar. Well, I had to write a paper on them in high school, so that's oh. always been in the back of my mind. All right. Career. Essentially, post wow. right? Wow! So, yeah. I love that. I don't think I can recover. I, I think I think. <laughs> well, wait for number nine. Oh, well, guys, oh, I think we're gonna end right there. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, <laughs> okay. All right, Mike, you're up. My number nine is the Eagles. Oh, the Eagles. Kind of a similar, wow. kind of a similar thing to uh, the Grateful wow. Dead, even though they had more hits, kind of more mainstream. And you know, even though, like, so my favorite thing about the Eagles is they were okay. First off, they were Linda. Um, Rod, Rod, they were her band. Right. Like Glenn Frey and Don Henley back up. Yeah. And they were like, hey, we're going to go on tour and you're my band. And then they were like, no, we're going to have our own band called yeah. the Eagles. So kind of like the band, you know, the, the Bob Dylan's band, who I did not include because they're mostly Canadian. Yeah. Um, we should have called them the North American. Yeah, maybe maybe this should be a North American list because the band. We're was, allowed to change the rules on the. I guess we are. Yeah, this isn't like some you know. Yeah. Official thing, but uh, the Eagles. I just think. Um, I mean, Hotel California alone. The uh, the 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 uh, the the like uh, that 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 double guitar solo. Oh, just. Yeah. I mean, literally unbelievable, and I just think the Eagles. Are just one of those bands that uh, they were a backup band, and they became their own band. Then they disappeared. Then they came back. Like their music, just like yeah. it basically their music started classic rock. Yeah. On like radio. I, I'm actually surprised it's that low on your list. Yeah, it's well, on my list as well. But yeah, well, I I have a I have a a couple. Well, it, it, yeah, I, that's where I think they they they. Wow. I agree yeah. with the Eagles because they were really the, uh, a super group. Because mm-hmm. everyone in that band played somewhere else. Like, yes. they lost yeah. Success. But they yes. always kind of came back to the... Yeah. Yes. Like, they, they all had experience. And when they got together as the Eagles, they just took off. Like yes. They had so much backup coming yes. into it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, the Eagles, number nine. Definitely agree. Not the position, but... The okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. wow. All right. Jay. You guys ready for this? Yeah. Oh. Van Halen. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I agree. Van Halen has to be on the list. Just because of two things. Showmanship. Yes. 
than Eddie. Yes. Yeah. Simple as that. Yep. Probably maybe the greatest guitarist of all time. Yeah. Top three. Yeah. Yeah. He's Easily. he's in the top three. Yeah. So you know, that's all that matters. Yeah. I mean, when Eddie passed, like people were really in the music world were really shook up. Yeah. Like it's not just like, well, he, we. Another one died. No, he's, no. The he's the guy. No, I mean Eddie Van Halen he's is the guy. The, yeah. he, he's the pick of destiny. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, like so he, they had to be on the list. I didn't know where to put them. Yeah, I originally had them at ten. Okay. But Eddie pushed them. Yeah. Come yeah, on, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Can't be ten. Now, it's, 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 they're ten still on the Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Please. I, I actually have 21 bands listed, and so yeah, I... Uh, see, that's the thing. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard it's to get hard. down, but, you know, I really wanted to put them... They were so, like... They almost had too much fun. Yeah. Like, they, they never took things too seriously, uh -huh. which is, I think... The, the endearing. downfall a little bit. Well, a little bit of downfall, but it's kind of endearing that they did... It's music. Yeah, they were rock and roll. They were rock and roll. Yeah. So and they matured, on, too. They matured. Yeah. Um, but they, they've kind of hung around a little, you know, mm -hmm. I saw them with, uh, Tom and Dave. Yeah. Dave was terrible. He lost his voice. Dave, <laughs> it, it Sammy's was, good though. I was, you know, Eddie and Wolfgang I saw and I was like, okay, that, it's a mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm happy with my, I saw him and I checked the box. Yeah. So. That's where I'm at. Okay. All right, number nine. Number nine. All right, so I'm going back to the 60s. Okay. I'm going with the Ronettes. Dude, your list. Wow. I, I can't even so, handle this list. So think about this. Be My Baby, all right? Great song. So Brian Wilson supposedly listened I'm to embarrassed. that songs a thousand times. That influenced him to become, like, get serious about music. Yeah. Like, he was driving, he heard the song come on the radio, he pulled off the side of the road, listened to it, and just was obsessed with that song. Yeah. So, wow. influenced to the Beach Boys. Wow. Um, think of how many people sampled that song. Billy Joel, Eddie Money, Poison. Um, it's still sampled today. And I read, the BMI estimates that that song has been played on radio and TV 3.9 million times. So that's Whoa. 17 years consecutive back-to-back -back plays. Wow. It's that influential, right? Now, they didn't really have a huge catalog of music. They had that big hit. Uh, but Phil Spector produced wow. that. He went on to work with George Harrison. So he created that wall of sound. And the Beatles were influenced by that song. So it wow. was basically that song is why I put them on that list. Because Holy shit. Was, right? Wow. So I'm, I'm, that I'm blown away. That's incredible. Yeah. That is incredible. So you, you hit it off with two girl groups. I did. I did. I, mean, I don't I don't have one girl on my Again, list. Yeah, I was looking for originality, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, Chris is here to balance our ass out. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, mine's, my list is a big sausage party. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for the babes. Come yeah. On. But wow. I was like, I was like Ronnie too because she wow. would do that with Eddie Money, right? So that's wow. how the song came cool. back again. That's so, um, incredible. You know, so, yeah, um, yeah. We're going Very back cool. to the 1960s here on the Top Forty <laughs> with Casey Kasem. I've always wanted to be able to do his voice and do like a Casey Kasem thing. I, I just, I love that stuff. Yeah. All right, okay. So my number eight, my number eight, we're at, do the Ronettes. I can't. I, that's just your Go Go's and Ronettes. I, I can't believe it. I'm blown away. I can't believe it. Okay, so this is this is kind of a. Uh, not only a great band, but also kind of like a personal favorite. It was a band that my dad, like my, so my family's very musical as far as like instruments and stuff. My mom, singer songwriter, I'm a guitar player, taught us how to sing and everything. My dad didn't have musical talent, but he loved music. And a band that he used to play for us all the time we were kids, like in the car, was the Doobie Brothers. Oh yeah. And I, I needed them on my list. Uh, whether wherever, wherever, just because I mean, and now you have two Doobie Brothers. You do. You got the original Doobs. Blackwater. And then you got uh, the Michael uh, McDonald. Taking it to the street. Exactly. <laughs> so I kind of felt like not only not only were, are, were they a great band uh, that kind of had two different. Yeah. Uh, incarnations or whatever, <laughs> uh, longevity, you know, yeah. great music, and uh, also a personal kind of favorite yeah. of mine. Well, well, that's a sentimental. That was an yeah. early, you know, like when I, I mean, we used to sing Blackwater. I mean, 
That's a great song. And you know what he told me? So back when he was younger, they would hear it on AM radio, right? Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, there's like like it um, chimes or something. Yeah. You know what I'm talking sure. about? And he said he never heard those until it came out on like on CD. Because oh, because really? they it didn't pick it up. didn't pick up over the AM radio, wow. and he goes so like there were parts of that song that on the radio you really couldn't it didn't translate it didn't come through right wow. and then when he later in life he you know has kids now he has the CD and it's like a whole new new experience but we used to sing that when I was kids that there's the, there's the three of us we would sing like the harmony oh black water keep on I mean like it was kind of a it's a cool song it's, like an it's very moody too yeah. It's like an anthem. Yeah. Yes, and so that band I needed to put in there just kind of a, of a kind of like a personal, personal thing. What's cool with the Doobies is um, they're guitarists. I only know his nickname; it was Skunk. Okay, so that's how I remember it. But he did uh, session work for Donna Summer. So okay, all her guitar solos was that was Skunk doing it. Oh wow! And he's a super smart guy. If you research him, he has uh, like he's an engineer, mm -hmm. and he did work with the government. Like he has contracts, like security clearances and whatnot. Like he, he's come. Up with like different technologies and things like he's a really smart guy oh wow he started like building his own equipment and he's like you know i'm smart he went to school and then he went and got government contracts so he had like a whole second career outside of the doobie brothers so that, that's a cool band like, wow you actually read their history that's really cool yeah wow. smart dudes all right so jason number eight metallica yes Ooh. i like that metallica you know never been Growing up, I was never a Metallica, <coughs> I guess you can say fan. Yeah. But everybody knew their songs. Yes. Yes. And then I saw them live uh, a few years ago. Center stage, spun, changed my whole perception yeah. of Metallica. Yeah. Incredible. Yes. It just, like, remember the other night we were at Willie's and I was like, are you a Metallica fan? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 The, 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 like, the, the bartender had a Metallica, Metallica shirt. I'm like, yeah. Metallica. You know, yeah. it's just, yeah, you know, they were really, like, for a rock band, like, heavy, heavy metal. Yeah. You know, them and Megadeth are really, yeah. Kind of there. Their sound is so clear. Yeah. Um, I thought it was impressive. Because, so. Because heavy metal can just be a lot of, like, screaming, clashing. Yeah. It's not. So they're they're on my list. Okay. The 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 middle of my list are three bands that basically invented their genre. Yeah. And that's why That's it, yeah. Metallica they're is founding father. They they basically invented a genre. Right. Of now there were other bands. Sure. Like just like Pearl Jam and there's other sure. grunge, you know, Seattle bands, obviously, but when you think about that genre, yeah. It's it's Metallica. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah, so when we get to my, I don't have to say it again, but that's, no, I'm yeah. glad that, yes. that I'm not alone, yes. that they're on, they're on the Yeah, list. they're not Thronettes, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the Goat. Imagine they open for that. Be my, <laughs> good. and here is uh, a new hit from Metallica covering the Ronettes. Yeah. Be my little baby. <laughs> Next, uh, 101.1 FM. All right, number eight for Chris. So I broke a rule with number eight. Okay. All right. So I did one of those hybrid bands. Okay. So I did the Heartbreakers. Okay. Okay. But I justified it as I mean, when I say the Heartbreakers, you got I'm sure it's something came to your mind. Where if I said Silver Bullet band, maybe not everyone's going to identify that. But like, yeah, the Heartbreakers I felt were big enough. You know, the, I, I could say Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Okay. So yeah. and the reason why is so there's a few things with with Petty, right? There, he was an honorable mention. Yeah. Yes. And then I, I was like, you know what? I, I got to put him on the list. Yeah. So yeah. Everyone respects him. Yes. Like anyone I talked to, yeah, Petty would always come up. Yeah. They always thought he was a great songwriter. He was a good dude. Like he was a true artist, right? So I like that. Um, and then he really was innovative in the fact that when he became a big hit on his third album, "Damn the Torpedoes," mm -hmm. the uh, record studio wanted to increase the uh, how much they were selling the records for. So it was like four ninety nine to five ninety nine. They called it superstar pricing, and Petty won't allow them to do that. He literally would hold his record back, and they oh, I think they got into a lawsuit over it um, because he felt that his fans, that they were pricing him out of that market. So he's like, my fans can't afford that. They're, they're kids. Hmm. They got five bucks. You know, you're going to yeah. start charging all this money for my records. 
you're making the money, not me. Yeah. You know, my fans are important to me. So he literally sued the record label. So he was like a man of the people. He was, yeah. And yeah. It was, his art was more important than making the money. Wow. So that was a true testament to, you know, what he cared about. And then he got his own label. So that part yeah. of it was he, he pushed yeah. about Backstreet Records, I think. Yeah. Something like that. Um, so, you know, he, he pushed for that. And then he helped so many other people out, too. I mean, like throughout music and yeah. help people write songs and he was just it, like, a down-to-earth guy the fame didn't get to him he just loved music and i like played, that you know like he was with the traveling wilburys oh yeah 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 you know, so he was good solo yeah um so petty was definitely for his like yeah. I said, man of the people yeah. wow so chris tilt your yeah. microphone up but it's not Sorry. like nice and straight 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 up and down got you like this yeah okay all Sounds right. better. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go. We are headed on to number seven. Mine is a part of the bands that kind of uh, created or epitomized their genre, and that is the Ramones. Ooh. Like, yeah. I'm not like, I don't have like Ramon t shirts or albums or anything, but when I think of bands, you know, I mean, you know, you know, like you could listen. You could have a list of just ten bands from like like the '60s. I mean, Easy. but I'm yeah. trying. I was trying to you know spread over the like decades here. Yeah, you're trying to get a mix. Yeah, and I feel like you know um, when you think of a certain genre of music, like the three chord song, like you know what I mean. It it's the Ramones, and really. My middle three here, five, six, seven, could really be like in any order. Uh, uh, but I think the Ramones should be on the list for their kind of uh, where where did they play CBGBs? Yeah, yeah, just yeah. that. Put that on the map. Yeah, yeah, just like that kind of. And you know, if, I, I might be mistaken, but I, you know, I feel like that in like grunge and all of that was really kind of this response to like Rush style, complicated. Is that is yeah, that but right? It, and they started the whole like, um, it was cool to be at a show with like fifty to one hundred people. Yes, yeah, and, and that was okay. Like you don't have to play in front of hundred thousand people. Exactly, like, exactly. Yeah, so that, that, you know, like your part, like it's like a niche kind of yeah. thing. Like, yeah, that was like their thing. So that's why I felt like the Ramones needed to be yeah. somewhere that's, on that's a good on, that's on a the, good one on the list. They they made my honorable mention. So. Okay. So you, we're all we're kind of on the same page. Yeah, you know we have a similar list. Yeah. All right, Jay, number seven. Um, my number seven, we we already talked about, so we don't need to. Yeah. Uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash, Young. Yes. Um, they've sold a gazillion records, and yeah. they're all great in their own right. Yeah. Um, they are a little bit of a hybrid and kind of broke a little bit yeah. of the rule, but they're they're originated in in America. Yeah. So yeah. I think that it's okay. Yeah. You know, but you can't ignore their influence. Exactly. Yeah. I saw them live in New York. It's not that I'm a big, I wouldn't go to their concert probably. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you. You said you saw them. So when I lived in New York City, obviously, uh, you, you, you mean, yeah. I, I saw David Crosby on the street. Right. And he looked very angry. <laughs> yes. And not approachable with that walrus mustache. And yeah. he, was in, he was in front of a hotel. So I'm assuming he was waiting for his car or whatever to get the airport or whatever and i'm walking and i'm like that's that's david crosby like yeah. that, that's cross stills nash young yeah. and i'm thinking you know maybe not you know could just be another kind of yeah. guy and as i'm getting closer i'm like that's him and i'm like i have to say hello but he looked so unapproachable <laughs> that i'm like you know what he's gonna punch me so i just felt like you know what yeah. I see a lot of celebrities. It's New York City. Yeah. Um, John Hamm. I crossed the street with Angelica Houston. Wow. And she knew I was like tweaking out over it. Like yeah. she could, she was like kind of like, like smiling because I was, I think I was doing this the whole time. I think as I was crossing the street, I was just looking at her. Like you almost so, got hit by a bus. Like really, I could have just been yeah. taken out because I literally was like, that's Angelica Houston. What a handsome woman. Her, her and Glenn Close. That's from Family Guy, but anyway, um, uh, but yeah, but uh, and he did. He interrupted one of my. Um, so him and I had the same voice doctor. So there are ENTs that specialize just in the singing voice, yeah. in the, the speaking voice. I mean, they can they they, they look in your nose because it's all connected. But there there's this doctor in New York who basically his office was across the street from the Met Metropolitan Opera. 
the walls of his office was like signed, you know, thank you, doctor, from you name it, Michael Jackson, a Madonna. Like he was, I don't, I don't know how I got in w w with this guy, but he was the doctor, the voice doctor to, uh, uh, to the stars. Wow. And I'm in the appointment. I'm sick or something. And there's a knock on the door and, um, his like medical assistant goes, excuse me, uh, but you have a phone call. Uh, Mr. Crosby needs to talk to you. And I'm thinking, you know, it's not, but, and the doctor goes, I'm with a patient. And so he closes the door. A couple minutes later, knock on the door, comes back in. Mr. Crosby says that you'll interrupt an appointment for him. And I said, doctor, is that David Crosby? He goes, yeah. I'm like, please just, I'm, I'm okay. just take care of it. Like <laughs> it's okay. You know? And then do you ever watch West Wing? A little oh, bit. Great yeah. show. The, the actor Toby, I think his name was Richard Schiff. Yeah. He, yeah. he took my, my, my appointment. I was sitting, I'm in the waiting room. Toby walks in. I guess he was on Broadway or something. I'm like, it's freaking Toby. I love West Wing. <laughs> and then talking to the receptionist, the receptionist goes, I'm, I'm sorry, but Mr. Schiff's going to have to take your um, appointment. I'm like, Toby can do whatever. He can have all my appointments. Like, I'm nobody. I'm nobody. And like, Cindy Lauper came in. Wow. I'm sitting there with a Cindy Lauper. It was the, it was, I, I, I would get sick just to go and she just, just have fun. Just to, yeah, just to try to get a voice, you know, doctor's appointment. But anyway, CSNY is great band. I, I, I did not consider them because yeah. of Nash being from England and um, Young being from Canada. But I think I understand how they could yeah. be on the list. You can break a rule here. Yeah. They, they had to be on the list somewhere. Yeah. yeah. They're, you know. they're, they're in my honorable mention because of the net, because okay. I didn't know, I didn't think we were going to consider them. Yeah. All right. Chris, you're up. All right. So number seven is the doors. Oh. Wow. Wow. So, I mean, think about it. like Jim Morrison, man. Yeah. Like, he took music to a different level yeah. in that era. They're, they are on my list. Yes, they are. They are. He made it um, an art, mm -hmm. right? The poetry, the lyrics, it was totally different than anything that was out there. And he was one hell of a front man. I mean, mm -hmm. he kind of, a lot of bands acted the way that he did too later on. I mean, yeah. Not all the good, but he, he was like a mysterious figure. He was yes. very dark. He, didn't they call him the the lizard king? Yes, <laughs> he's a li he, the lizard king. The lizard king. Yeah. Well, so, that's an interesting. I'm gonna get a business card where it says the lizard king. <laughs> Hand it to me. I think you'll get arrested. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> but, the doors. So interesting story about the doors, right? Uh, one of Burl's clients comes in one day. He's an old guy, and he needs this radio reset or something. Burl's business I said, I'll help you. So we're out there, and he, you know, he's like maybe 80 years old, and he sent me set his presets on this Lexus, and he wanted like classic vinyl and yeah. uh, rewind and all that, you know. And I just happened to say, I, I like your choice of music, and you know, we started talking. Turns out he went to high school with Jim Morrison. Wow. He was Whoa. Years younger than him. Uh, but he goes, yeah, Jim signed my yearbook, and he said we weren't friends, but we were, you know, past each other. Where's he from? Way. Like, like where would that be from? He, well, I believe he I went to high school in California, but he moved around because his parents were in the Navy. Oh, okay. So okay. he was like a mm. military graph as well. Okay, yeah. Very yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. So the, the doors, so that connection there, but um, they were innovative, right? I mean, the material was awesome. I loved the use of the, of the organ. Yeah, very original. I loved the use of the organ in that band. Yeah, so the, the doors for sure. The doors. Okay, number six, I have Me Metallica for the reason I said earlier. Just that kind of yeah. the 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 father of that genre. Yeah. So we've talked about them. So yeah, I have Metallica. No, that's great. At, I mean, at number six, we're, we have very similar lists. Yeah, and again, they they could have been seven. I mean, it, yeah. it just kind of yeah. They the middle were, part can be interchangeable. Yeah, they I I I needed them on the list for that reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number six for me. Uh, might be a surprise. I don't know. Okay. Nirvana. Ooh. Oh, all so right. I have it as number six as well. Okay. So we can knock this out. Yeah, we can knock it out together. I and and you know what? Spoiler alert, I have them as number five. So, okay. so let's just discuss. Table discussion. Yeah, let's just discuss so on, on, on Nirvana. We all agree that they're the middle, yeah. middle of the list. I don't like their music, to be honest. I, I don't. I mean, I'm like, I got to go listen to Nirvana. And that never no. crosses my mind. No, but it's much more of a. 
uh, just the like Metallica. Just when you think of that genre, turning point. They're the band. It's Pearl Jam and Nirvana. I yeah, mean, that's it. That they they're the nineties. Yeah, they're yeah. just that that and and that like kind of genius of Kurt Cobain. People still yeah. want to write like he like does. Kurt Cobain. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So and he didn't care about knowing how to play the guitar. He was like yeah. the anti Eddie Van Halen. You know, he took guitar and he gave it back to the regular. Do you remember guy. their unplug? Yeah. He like he would miss like chords and, and stuff. He didn't he didn't care. Now. And you know, so it was a totally different guitarist, yeah. but he's famous for the fact that what he created. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And he destroyed hair metal. Like you can look yeah. bands that were yeah. huge in the eighties. Yeah. Getting into the nineties, ninety one hit run single handedly. Dropped yeah. it off. It was like a wall came down. Yeah. All those bands were dropped by their label. Everyone wanted the next Nirvana. So he changed the record industry. I mean, exactly. Exactly. Big, big influence. Yeah. Yeah. You can't deny it. Yeah. No. No. Nir Nirvana. Nirvana. So and that was your number five. That's my number five so, is Nirvana. So why don't you give us your... Oh, so we have to go. Right? Yeah. So you're going to do five. Yeah. Okay. So number five for me, I'm, I'm, I'm switching everything here, would be Aerosmith. Okay. Good choice. Aerosmith, um, the longevity itself. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, some some not good news yesterday or two days ago with relapse. going into relapse, but uh, they have so many great songs. Yeah. Um, I've heard mixed things about their live act. Um, I've heard people say it's the greatest act in the world, and I've heard it's atrocious. So I, I don't know what to think. I haven't seen them yeah. live. But, uh, you know, I, I like their music. Yeah. At the end of the day, I can sit down and listen to Aerosmith and be happy. Bad Boys in Boston. Yeah. yeah. I'm very, I'm good with them. Okay. And even though he looks like some kind of, like, female. Like, like, like Spinster Ant? Yeah, very weird. Yeah, he's got a weird of, look. Yeah, you know, this hobo-ish look. Yeah, very going. interesting. I don't know about that. The scar. Yeah. The scar. Yeah, the scar. It's like Johnny Depp, too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, not not in the trial right now, because he's in, like, a suit and stuff. Like, oh, yeah. Johnny Depp in the wild, you don't know. There's, like, a <laughs> lot. Yeah. There's, like, a lot going on. Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of. Jack so Sparrow. Uh, in there. There's, like, yeah. like, 25 bracelets. And, yeah, yeah you, it's almost like he keeps a piece of every character. Yeah. A little Mad Hatter. Yeah, you know, a little yeah. Willy Wonka, yeah. a little Jack Sparrow. Yeah, that's, that's it's, Stephen Tyler. Yeah, Stephen Tyler's the same. His song it's, is part of them. Yeah, and like, it's... it's you the, gotta remember, they were, like, they were, like, dead for a while, and then they did that... Uh, Armageddon. Run, run DMC. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And then they kind of, like, made a comeback, and yeah. then Armageddon made them big. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That song was number one for, like, a year. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love that song, actually. I mean, it's... Liv <laughs> Tyler. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, Liv. Oh. That's probably his his greatest dumb uh, um, uh, contribution to uh, well, society. Well, Dream On is yeah. probably my personal favorite song ever. Mm -hmm. So I had to have them somewhere near near the the top. We should mention our favorite songs of all time. Oh, that, that's too hard. I know, isn't it's it? Tough. I, it changes on my mood. The t yeah, the day, yeah. Mine. What I need. I'll tell you mine. Something about you, level forty two. That's a yeah, great song. Great song. That song. It's uplifting. I love that song. That in, is in a keyboard. Yeah, there's something about a keyboard. Yeah, in a song that like works. Yeah, great song. That's like their thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah level, uh, level forty two. Something song. about you. That song. My it was my dad's favorite song. My mom told me, and I think I if I think I just it's just like Absorbed my dad you. probably just played it, and yeah. it was kind it's of like inner. like like the Doobie Brothers. One of these early musical things that kind of yeah told me like that the seed was planted. Early yeah, yeah. Mu music was something that I was attracted to. Yeah, you know. Yeah. All right, Chris, number five. All right, number five is Van Halen. Okay. Yes. Yes. So um, we already talked about them a little bit, but what I like you know, about Eddie Wright, I mean, he's the guitar guy. He, he's yeah. Everybody looked up to. Him, everybody wanted to be him. So again, innovative. They didn't write all their songs, but all their big hits they wrote. Yeah, okay. You know, so they were all contributors to that. They did a lot of covers early on, but I, I still like them. And when you look at it, they were a 70s band, right? So they came out, mm -hmm. they went into the 80s, and all their records were multi-selling. Yeah, they were like 78 or 77, right? Yeah. I mean, they And Gene Simmons actually paid for the demos to get written, so Running With The Devil, he recorded that. Okay. So they, they had um, you know, a good foundation. They got started. Um and then, you know, through the 80s, they transitioned, right? So, I mean, they lost David Lee Roth, and they picked up Sammy Hagar. Yeah. yeah. How many other bands have made that switch? 
Yeah, like yeah. The Seinfeld episode where you want to date the roommate, but you're dating the other one. Yep. Guys, the switch. Eddie used his mirror. His Lamborghini <laughs> mirror. Yeah. You, that's in all they the meant. actual songs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> you, you know, you're. I gotta be a fan. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's because how, Sammy used his front twelve. Yeah. yeah, his BB. You know, Look. that's how Sammy and Eddie met was through the mechanic. Yes, so there was really. Guys yes. in LA that would work on these cars. Right, and Sammy and Eddie. That's how they met was through the mechanic. The mechanic Eddie. said, hey. "Tom Bill and that." Wow. <laughs> hey. Well, yeah. yeah. Might work out the same. Wow. No. <laughs> yeah. But they also survived grunge. So we were talking like. Oh grunge, like, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yep. Yeah. A good part of the career with Sammy was during grunge, right? They won a yeah. Grammy when grunge hit. They, you know, they went on live tours, so they were still big, putting out number one records. Huh. So they survived all the way through, um, and then they just kind of dropped off. Yeah. So they they kind of stopped when they had good material, right? They they quit on top. Yeah. With Roth, they came back, put some stuff out, but it, it wasn't like the heyday. But you know, um, Van Halen didn't make my list for just the fact that I just don't know their stuff. I mean, I know it. Yeah. peripherally just from them being famous but i've just never been a van halen kind of like i'm listening to van halen i've never listened to them on purpose if that makes sense like you know what I mean? i've never gone on spotify so i'm gonna listen to van halen today yeah, i don't I know do. they're like the first band yeah you yeah drop dead legs. yeah That's a great song i don't know i just uh yeah. I just they're they're not a band that's kind of in my they're fun in they my are. orbit and what's cool is like you may love david lee roth or Sammy Hagar. Yeah. And you can oh, like Van Halen. So exactly. Like two different yeah. sounds that you can get on yeah. board with. You can like them both. Um, I like Hagar. Hagar I'm loves I'm like, like Hagar tequila too. or something. Oh, he yeah. has his own. Yeah. And he has a band. Isn't it a band called Chicken Foot? He, well, he had that and he's gone on since that. So he's oh, okay. done like all the solo stuff. So yeah. Was, Chicken Foot. Yeah. I that was, was a super group with um, yeah. Chad Smith. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Michael Anthony from Van Halen, of course. I forget the other guy, but yeah. I've seen Sammy live. He's a cool guy, man. Yeah, that's what he I was mean. Doing shots with guys in the audience. He, he would hand him stuff. He, and sign he just and seems and like a down. really yeah. cool dude. Yeah, super cool guy. Yeah. So Van okay, Halen, wow. number five. All right, my my number four is the Doors. Ooh. The Doors. Me too. The Doors. Me too. So let's um, just knock this out. I needed the Doors. I really thought I I put them high up. Top, you know, number four, because like when I think of bands from that era that aren't British, um, it's the Doors, yeah, and yeah. just uh, they held their own with like the the best, yeah, and uh, they're still part of the conversation, like they're still kind of yeah. out, you know what I mean? Everyone knows the Doors, and I love the organ. I just love the organ, to yeah. be honest. And so that's your that's your. That's also my number four. Okay. So we hit it right on the button. And, and we've talked about them. So go ahead, Chris. Chris. All right. So number four, I think, is going to surprise you guys. Okay. So I got another little. This bit is of what Boston. we like. So the band Boston. Oh, oh. of course. So yep. think about this, right? This guy, Tom Scholz. Yeah. He was a mechanical engineer. I think he worked for Kodak. Okay. Kodak, right. In his part time, he's like, I'm going to buy this recording equipment, go in my basement, start making records. So him and Brad Delt, who was the lead singer, yep. they recorded the entire first album in his basement outside of one track. Um, and Epic Records was like, no, you're not going to do that. You're going to come to the studio, record with us. Um, they ended up only recording one song at Epic. Everything else was done in Tom's basement, right? And that album came out, sold 17 million copies. It was the highest selling debut album until Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction. Tom wrote all the songs. He huh. invented his own um, his own equipment. So he invented an amp called the Rockman, uh, which then Def Leppard went on to use for Hysteria. So all these other guitarists were like, hey, we need this. So Tom was very uh, innovative. He wrote his own material. And what I like about Boston was um, kind of like Tom Petty. Yeah. When the uh, label was like, hey, we need a record. Tom was like, it's not done yet. Uh, I'll give it to you when it's done. Yeah. Got into a lawsuit. Took him six years to make this record. Put it out. Went number one. Right, it was the third stage, which had the song Amanda. Oh yes. And Amanda has the distinction of being the last number one Billboard hit without a music video. So in the heyday of oh, okay, everyone had music videos. Yeah, so yeah. Like, We're not doing it. We're just putting out our material and let it sell. Yeah, itself and yeah. Number one. Yeah. So I'm really glad somebody had Boston on their list. Yeah, that's in my because I made my list a little bit last night. Yeah. And then today I thought about Boston. 
Yeah. Is more than a feeling would, would be a top five song for me. Yeah, I love that song. And, and I'm like, man, they're my honorable mentions. Yeah, same. So we're we're all we're hitting all the the, the big ones, but yeah, um, they're Delph voice is amazing. Yeah, I love Boston. It's a great yeah. band. What's cool too with them that uh, is kind of interesting, right? They're anti rock and roll. Mm-hmm. Like in their records, they say that they're anti drug. Where I'd say they don't do drugs, they don't smoke, yeah. they don't do the stuff, which is that's the business that they're in. Yeah, right? exactly. I mean, they're in there with the, the worst and everybody else, yeah. but they're just they're like anti-establishment. Yeah, they don't go to the record, they the record labels, they do their own stuff in the basement. So what I heard about fans. yeah, and what I heard about Boston was that they were at they sounded live what the record sounded yeah. like. Yeah, which was amazing, to be amazing because he could hit to the high notes. Yeah, and, and you know. Oh, yeah. It's, you know, you're not going to hit it out of the park on every live show. Yeah. Well, you want to know something about the Eagles. Their original bass player sang that um, Take, it to the limit. Take It to the Limit. Randy Miser. And he would ref- he, he stopped doing it live. And then and they and they kicked him out because yeah. he that high note at the end he couldn't do it yeah. he he couldn't do it or he was afraid he could you know it it's like w- w- yeah. when I sing opera there's usually like at least one or two notes during the show it's hard where I'm like I I have to nail that and I don't know if I can and you know when you sing opera well, when you do anything you you don't do it a hundred percent you can't sing a hundred percent like the you know what I mean you sing it like sixty. And then pick a couple places during the opera to go to 100. And yeah. it's usually a big high note or something. Yeah. And so I I understand that. Uh, I, I understand where he was coming from. But uh, you, you got to sing the song. Yeah. Cliff, I was like, sing the fucking song yeah. right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And he said, I'm not singing it. And they <laughs> take them out of the band. Yeah, they yeah. got Timothy B. Schmidt. It, we'll see you later. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Take it to the limit. That's a great song. That is. It's yeah. a great song. That's the credit card song. Yes. Take it to the limit. Take- <laughs> Which I do on a routine basis. I am okay, in. Where, where are we? Number three? Okay, so... Is that where we are? So, the four was The Doors, okay. Boston. My number three is The Almond Brothers. Oh. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people would say, yeah, you gotta respect that. Um, oh, oh, that's the wrong one. I have to be honest, I am not, like, kind of like, like The Grateful Dead. I don't know their music very well but i just know when it comes to american rock and roll of that era that name's there the allman brothers it's just one of those groups that is just like there yeah it's just it's just one of those really influential top groups of that era and i had to have it in my i I think in i thought in my top three that's good that's good yeah that's great so that's the allman brothers jay number three the Foo Fighters. Oh, Ooh. you know what? I got to tell you something. I love the Foo Fighters. They're one of my favorite bands of all time. Yeah. They're not in my top 10 because I feel like there's just other bands historically that kind of, like, they, they'd be like 11. So, so Does that make me, sense? Let me tell you why they're so high. Okay. They have one of the best musicians as a lead guy. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Who was also the drummer for Nirvana. For Nirvana, yeah. Which which when you think when you see the Foo Fighters and you think about that, yeah. You it, it's kind of a little bit of a disconnect for me. It doesn't seem like it could be the the, the Foo yeah. Fighters would be like the like the natural progression all of music Nirvana. Yeah, all they, I kind of feel like they're a little bit like the Heartbreakers. Yeah. They're, they're current. So that was a part of it. I wanted a current yeah. And, and okay. They're not done. No. So they have no. a lot more potential too. Yeah. Like they, they can keep going for a while. Yeah. So I I put them high because they they're just uh, <clears throat> we've talked about it many times. Currently, are there a lot of bands you'd pay to see? Not no. But Foo the Foo Fighters, Fighters is one of them. And I'm really sad that I never got to see um Taylor Hawkins. Yeah. And his death is a huge blow. Yeah. And because really that band is. Is them but, too? But I think they're gonna keep going. I oh, don't think sure. They're gonna just like go no, disband. No, but like their friendship, their relationship, like yeah, was the kind of, in my opinion, like the core of that band. Yeah, the yeah. Of it, yeah. And uh, um, it's sad that he's gone. Yeah. But I am a huge Foo Fighters fan. You're right. 
the last album that I really listened to of theirs was from several years ago, um, Wasting Light. Is that what it was called? Or Wasting Time? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'll, I'll, I'll find I it. I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember. It's Spotify now. Yeah, exactly. It's just all... Singles. Every single song. Yeah. Just from top to bottom. Yeah, hit, hit. Just hit. the like, unrelenting, great music. It's powerful. Nothing was... Be- there was yeah. no... Maybe track number four because it was a little like Screamo. I might just, you know, but regardless, it was a great song. But there's not. No, there's no dip. There's no dip. Yeah. No, it is just constant, uh, just hook after hook after yeah. just great everything about it. I'm a huge Foo Fighters fan. Well, I'm glad they're on the list. They're yeah. They made a list. Yes. Yeah. But they're like my like number like 11. So they didn't make your list. Did they make your list? They did not. Yeah. So my number three is going to lick it up. Okay. Oh yeah. Kiss. Wow. Kiss. Yeah. Kiss. So when you this was like showmanship, right? <laughs> you can't top these guys. Yeah. No. They're still touring the day. Yeah. I mean Gene has like taken everything to a next level. Yeah. No matter if it's real estate, reality TV, music. Yeah. And they're not the best musicians. Like that. No. I didn't put them in because they're great songwriters or because they can really play their instruments, you know, better than anyone else. They're just yeah. really good at what they do. My they biggest a good show. My biggest struggle is leaving them off. Because, so I've seen them live. Yeah. Have you seen them live? I haven't, no. They, it, they were the last show um, I saw in um, the Civic Arena. And, you know, the Civic Arena was built for sound. Yeah. For music. And it was, it, I was like right in the front. That's awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. Like Kiss was a blast. Yeah, it, it didn't matter if they are not great musicians. No, they you people go to just enjoy. Yeah, it's just it's like a it's a celebration. Circus. Yeah, yeah, it's a circus and yeah, it's a success story too. Like Gene yeah. Simmons was what an English teacher or some he was a teacher. Yeah, yeah, and they put together this band and they tried different things. I mean, they're the original hair metal. Right? Yeah, I mean they wore makeup. They totally original in what they did. Yeah. Um, and they were basically a struggling band. They couldn't get anything. Platform boots. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then they were like, well, shit, we'll, we'll just do a live album. That's all the money we have. Yeah. And then they put that out and that put them on the map and that created yeah. this whole, you know, desire to have live albums and, yeah. you know, I mean, and then they had the fan clubs and the merchandising. The pyrotechnics. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. there's so much that they came out with. I mean, the whole eighties hair metal was kiss. Everyone yeah, wanting to be them. Yeah, and yeah. they survived that, and they're still original. They're out there, and oh, yeah, so I'm really Kiss glad they're on. Yeah, there. yeah, Kiss, Kiss is in my kind they're of. They're in your orbit. Yeah, in my top twenty. Yeah, yeah, but uh, but no, I completely can understand. Uh, it's amazing what they've done. Yeah, it, with yeah. such yeah. limited ability. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And their songs are just simple. Like, I want to yeah. rock and roll night and party every day. Yeah. That's the, that's the whole song. It's like, okay, we're going to write a song. Oh, All right, Dr. Love. Yeah. yeah or lick it up. Yeah. Lick it up. Love God. <laughs> lick it up. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's hysterical. Yeah, but that, that's a hit. And that's people, a hit. They don't, the, the fans don't care. They're just, no. they're buying that, that whole fun vibe. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's a party. And don't take it too serious. We're just Definitely. having a good time. And, they have an interesting dynamic too, because you know Paul and Gene are Jewish. Yeah. And, and, and then Ace was like this Nazi. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. 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 You know. You were, yeah. Yeah. So they were, there was a lot of like There's a discord within the yeah. band and all this. It, it's real weird. Like it, it, neither Chris is actually a pretty good musician. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't want to say like they're, they're not bad know, musicians. They're not bad they're... musicians. No, I, I can't imagine being like an like openly like a Nazi. That's such a weird well position. He he's just not a fan of Jews. Yeah, very interesting. I, I, Nazi is a hard word to like accuse somebody of. Yeah, that's he's, true. But he's anti-Semitic. But he's anti-Semitic. yeah, but like when you say Nazi, I, I, everyone kind of gets it. Knows what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, he's not a fan because of, of all the Nazi party uh, policies. Uh, of all of the, you know, the different points of their platform, uh, the most kind of um, one that people automatically think of is the anti-Semitism. So right, when yeah. you say that, you automatically think yeah. anti-Semitism. Yeah. 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 But, Another thing that I, like, I was by... So I weird. CDs, right? And I was yeah. like to look to see who the band thanks. 
Oh, okay. You know, so it's like, oh, thanks to our record, you know, our yeah. guitar guy, our producer. Yeah. But look how many times other bands thank Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley. Even Eddie Money thanked them, right? Bon Jovi. So they would help these guys out. And really? Actually, yeah, I, I think it was uh, Bon Jovi. I read an article, and he made sure that, like, uh, or Gene Simmons made sure that they had enough food to eat. Yeah. They were just starting out, so like he'd let them open uh, for their act and whatnot. So Kiss helped a lot of guys come up. Jesus. Wow! It's like he would, like I said, Van Halen. He helped them get on the map, so he, yeah. he put a lot out there. So it wasn't all about him. Plus, he, Gene he kept those detailed uh, Rolodex. He he documented everything pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Including every woman he's ever slept with. Well, that's oh it. my lord! Yeah. And he's not shy about it either. Like that's out there. Oh, it's out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's out there. It's out there. Yeah, yeah he's right. But he, he's a cool dude. Gene, yeah, he's a no nonsense guy too. Like he's just he's business, smart business. He wears guy. leather sport coats. I kind of feel like yeah, you know, you're kind of a badass. Like if he walked in right now, I'd be like, holy shit, it's Gene Simmons. Yeah, yeah. Like, he has a lot of like gravitas. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Like if anybody else gravitas. walked in and be like, ah, hey, how you doing, Tom Petty? He sucks like, a lot Gene of the Simmons, air. Gene like holy shit. Yeah, he's yeah. on heels. Yeah, you know? yeah, wow. yeah. That's incredible. All right, let's head on to number two. Okay. So I was thinking of, okay, my, my, my top it's, two. It's got to be, we all have to be really close. Well, here. I thought, let's think of an early American band like that had a, a lot of influence on the future of rock and roll. Yeah. And it's the birds. Yeah. yeah. Very early, you have David Crosby. He's in the he's in the Hall of Fame twice. twice. The Birds and Crystal's Nash. Yeah. And I was just kind of thinking to myself, you know, like what's one of those early bands that, you know, had that kind of they were they were kind of inventing rock and roll with with every with yeah. the Beatles and with the Stones and with all the Hollies and all the, like those different bands. Yeah. So I thought the Birds deserved number two spot. That's like excellent. It, yeah. That's a, you went a little off the board there. Yeah. I, like I wasn't that. expecting that. No, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't expect it's that. the birds. Me. There you go. So number two for me. Are you done? Yeah. Number two for me um, was a tie. Okay. Well, yeah, I, was, I think I know it's going to. Yeah. I, I didn't know what to do. Um, so I put both of them down. But we already talked about the Eagles. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go with the other one. Okay. Oh, I know who it's going to be. CCR. Oh. oh I'm wrong. I'm yep. Wrong. Wow. CCR, CCR. Was the soundtrack during Vietnam. Yep. So you kind of that was a whole yeah generation a of, period of, of time, yeah. a period of time. Um, and the, I don't know of any band that has their music used more in movies than CCR. Yeah, yeah. fortunate song. I mean, that's yeah, thing. yeah. I mean, it's in every yeah, it's in every damn movie. <clears throat> um, and. I can sit and listen to them. I'm every. I yeah. have no problem. If you yeah. put CCR on, I'll listen to it all day. Yeah. So yeah. They, they were. It was the Eagles and CCR. I thought you were going to say the Beach Boys. Yeah. No. Nope. Wow. Yeah. No. Nope. I thought that was coming out. So my number two, we've already talked about, but it's Aerosmith. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right? Wow. So that's high. high. I just really respect those guys. So that's high up. Wow. When I think no, about them, no, not even on my list. That's an, now, yeah. Aerosmith. That's American institution. Right? Yeah. So they came out in 72. <laughs> He's <laughs> proud of it. Yeah, no, they came out in 1972. <laughs> uh, I mean, they've gone through career peaks and valleys, and they've always come through, right? So you yeah. just look at their music in the 70s. They put out their greatest hits in, like, 84 or 85. They thought they were done, and then yeah. they continued again. You're right. You know? And then in the 90s, it's like, oh, they're done. They put out their first number one record. So they started in 72, didn't have a number one until Armageddon, which was, what, 98, Isn't 97? That, that's really something. Wow. That, 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 that a band has that kind of staying power. The Dream On wasn't a number one hit. No, nah, it was a top ten. It was I a four. Number, I think it peaked at four. Yeah, but yeah, it wasn't number one. That's incredible. But what was interesting about that, wow. I, I read Stephen Tyler's book, too, so I, I yeah. read Stephen Tyler. And what would happen is their producers would come in and say, you're going to write with this songwriter. Because you're going to create a new sound. Okay. So they always stay current to the times. Okay. Right? So in the 80s, they had one songwriter, Desmond Child, and that's where they wrote, like, Love in an Elevator. I think that was in the 90s. Yeah. You know, they that was were, in 92. Yeah. It forced them to be creative and to not have the same stuff rehashed, right? So one record doesn't sound like the next. They're very original in that. Um, and also, like, I like how Steven Tyler comes, like, what, Dream On, Walk This Way, like, very yeah. simple but catchy. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Writes. 
Um, and yeah, because bands kind of lean on having like one sound. Sound, yeah. Mm -hmm. They kind of don't. You're right. Aerosmith was country at one point. Oh when wow! You, when you listen to some of the stuff in the '90s, like crazy, yeah. well, well, I'm trying to think one of those songs. Yeah, they kind of they actually went more country. Like they've done stuff with Carrie Underwood. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're just universal. Oh wow! And the fact that I mean, everyone in that band is solid. Kind of makes you like rethink your life. Yeah. Like, you know, like, oh, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. And they sold. I mean, shit ton of records like yeah. five million just in the u.s wow. yeah um and then the fact that steven tyler there's still a demand for him to be a judge on american idol like, oh he's yeah still like a name yeah, um, yeah everybody kind of recognizes yeah, him he's, still it might yeah. be because he looks like a, a female now yeah, yeah. A hobo, but so he's kind of like the american mick jagger yes yeah you know, okay right? like, no 100 percent. 100 percent. he's like our mick jagger and um and what Joe Perry? He plays with Johnny Depp. You mentioned Johnny Depp. Yeah, like yeah. American or yeah. Hollywood. Yeah, band. Johnny. Yeah, Johnny Depp has a band. Yeah. So uh, why don't we have a band? We, we should. Start hey, a band. I got a drum set downstairs. We can well, get that's some. What I play too. So yeah. We'll have two, drummers? two drummers. Yeah. So, uh, listen. That was third. That was special, that drummers. was another thing about the Grateful Dead I forgot to mention. Two drummers. Two drummers. Yeah. When a band has two drummers, that like that's high octane. That's just that's my shit. It's so cool because <laughs> the fact that they can like keep time together oh, yeah. is yeah. that's difficult. Yeah. Doesn't Dream Theater have two be two drummers too? No, Dream Theater just has one giant drum set. Oh, one big like um, I don't think Mike Portnoy he has plays. To, like, run back and forth. To play. So like I'm wow. so my drum set is a was inspired by Carter Buford from Dave Matthews, uh, Neil Peart from Rush. And Mike Portnoy from a Dream Theater. Yeah. So I would get Modern Drummer Magazine and I would see these pictures of Mike Portnoy's drum set, which was literally yeah. this. It had two stools because you had the main kit. Yeah. And then there was like another sub kit over here. You actually got me to go see Rush. Yes. And you were like, just watch Neil. Yeah. Don't worry about anything the, else yeah. going on. Yeah. And most people there were just staring at Neil. Yeah. Wow. His, there were a lot of, basically the audience is drummers. Yeah. Listen, you got to understand something. When you ask a drummer, the greatest drummers of all time, if they don't say Buddy Rich first, then they're idiots. But the number two spot, I would put Steve Gadd personally, but number three has to be Neil Peart. And he could even be no, no, number two. His drumming ability was out just un it's not human it was superhuman yeah what he was able to do his ability to play an odd switching um time signatures i mean you just google his drum set like the fact that he could yeah. play it is just remarkable but they're from canada yeah. so they're not on the list north american yeah. they're on the north american list they're on the north american, they're on the north american you have list. to bump somebody Right yes. Would, would uh, Ringo Starr make your top ten for drummers? Um, actually, uh, on the official Modern Drummer list, he's thirteen. Okay. Um, he, he you got to understand something is I my first kit was a Ludwig because Ringo had a Ludwig kit. Okay. I wanted Zildjian cymbals because he had Zildjian cymbals. My first drum teacher was Ringo Starr. He is the first person I ever imitated on the drum kit which is weird because he was a left-handed drummer playing a right-handed kit so he actually yeah. had a weird style but like the first time i got a drum set and played along with songs to learn beats was the beatles ringo influenced countless countless numbers of of, of, where, of drummers where was ginger baker um i don't think he was on the list i'll have I, I have the magazine somewhere i'll have to find it um, I think he was an honorable mention. Like even like Carter Beaufort was an honorable mention. I mean, he's a phenomenal drummer, but Dave Matthews Band, it's a modern band, even with all of his skill. What about the There's just you know, like Gene Krupa, there's there's almost like Tony Williams, a lot of jazz drummers, even Steve Gadd. He, he Steve Gadd is the drummer for um Eric, Eric Clapton. Okay. And people think his talent is wasted with Eric Clapton because it's just like straight like rock and roll pop songs and steve gadd is this like what about uh, phil? phil collins yeah, where was he? i don't remember i don't know if he was on the list um it is an interesting thing a lot of people probably don't know how great of a drummer he is yeah 
Um, I watched a video once, and all they did was isolate the, the oh, drummer, cool. the drums on a song. Or no, yeah. Like, on, on, and he could tell you who, like, who was playing it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's like unbelievable. A signature on those, How yeah. yeah. Well, that that's what I mean about having two drummers in a band. Drummers have, like, if you listen to Dave Matthews, there's no other drummer that plays like like, like Carter. Are, are we are we are we can are we missing out that they're not on the list? Who Dave? Yeah. So th they're not on the list for me because, um, like, uh, so if we had like a bracket system, yeah. And it was Dave Matthews, Grateful Dead. Grateful Dead would would win mm. in, in my bracket. I love Dave Matthews' band. They are a band that kind of, when Britney Spears was big and NSYNC, yeah. they kept my musical mind sane. Yeah, they were serious. Does that make sense? Yeah. They, yeah. they had horns, a violin, yeah. a real, like a drummer that he, it, it's like. They're, 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 they're orchestra. Yeah, I mean, I, I Carter must have at least six arms. I mean, I don't know how he's playing this stuff. But he's also a left-handed drummer who plays a right-handed kit. You notice my ride symbol is to the right, because that's where my right arm plays. His sure. ride symbol is up here. And you notice, if you go look at my drum set, I have a ride a ride symbol up to my left, okay. just because he does. Because he's left-handed. So his ride hand is actually, that's why he plays open-handed. Okay. So I play cross-handed. God, God, that's a great, 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 great. <laughs> Double <fisting. laughs> Anyway, I play cross because my right hand is playing the hi hat and the ride. Yeah, that's all. I but he play. he plays open because his left hand needs to hit the ride. Oh. So he has an open handed style. But anyway, yeah, he's unbelievable. But Dave Matthews Band, I think, is a phenomenal band. Um, however, I I don't quite know if they belong in the top 10. I understand. Does that make sense? Yeah. Did, I... did you hit your number two? Oh, wait. Yeah, uh, Aerosmith. Aerosmith. Okay. Yeah. okay, I'm sorry. Number one, pretty obvious. Yeah. The only band yeah. that, you know, when you talk about the Beatles making a record, yeah. and then they hear Pet Sounds, and then they make Sgt. Pepper, yeah. it's the Beach Boys. They're Agreed. the number one America because when you have Paul McCartney put Pet Sounds you know, in the studio That's their goal. or something, or I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't remember if it was the Beatles put pet sounds on the wall in the studio while making Sergeant Pepper, or if Brian Wilson had Sergeant Pepper on the wall while he was making something else, but they were this like, I mean, any band that directly was able to compete and influence one another like that. I mean, you watch an interview with Paul McCartney. Oh, who's that? Who's that? Um, that famous producer with the huge long beard, Rubens or something. I forget yeah, Paul his. Rubens. Yeah, Paul Rubens. Like he asked Paul McCartney, you know, who did you like listen? Oh, the oh the uh, the uh, Beach Boys, you know, and Pet Sounds, and then we made Sergeant Pepper. He literally said, "Yeah, Pet Sounds he, came out because, and then we made Sergeant Pepper because yeah. of Pet Sounds." Yeah, like that to me, and like any great list of greatest albums of all time. Yeah, Sergeant Pepper and like Pet Sounds. That's like one and two. Yeah. 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 Okay, you know, or you know what I mean. You also, might... also, the, one of the greatest songs ever, God only knows. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Paul McCartney's favorite song. Right. Yeah. If if the Beatles say that's our favorite song, yeah, they have to be. Yeah, and also again, like the Birds, it is the early. Yeah. It is the it is the birth of what you know. The... Their music got more serious too. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't just like fun, you know, because they thought it was just like a regional thing. Well, it was a surf was, band, definitely. Right, it was regional. And yeah. It took off. Yeah. But like, I mean, obviously you listen to them and they have their surf music and stuff, but like, God only knows. My first concert was the Beach Boys. Oh, I've never, I would love to see them. I was yeah. a kid. My, yeah. My mom took me with some yeah. of friends or her friends or something. And I didn't know what I was, you know. Yeah. yeah. But then I look back and I'm like, should have paid attention to that one. Yeah. You know? you know, I just started listening. The other day, um, a song popped into my head from Brian Wilson's album, Smile. Now, the Beach Boys recorded this music back in the day, but it was kind of, I think, when he was having his like mental breakdown, sure. and it wasn't fully realized. And so back like in 2004 or something, 
he got it. He didn't get the Beach Boys back together, but he got a whole, whole bunch of other uh, musicians and created his like mm -hmm. masterpiece. And the album is called Smile. Right. And there's just a couple tracks, and it's one of those albums that just it doesn't stop. Like it, okay. like all yeah. the songs just kind of. Actually, what annoys me is there's a song called Wonderful, and the end of that song is actually the beginning of the next track. So I, I have to listen to both because it's it's just supposed to be this. He calls it a, a rock opera. It's just supposed to be this kind of just one big piece yeah. and um you know but it, it is but they again when you hear the beach boys it, it's the beach boy like it's them. there's it's no them other same. sound yeah. Yeah. and like to me, there's and, a pretty big gap between one and two yeah and like in, in my opinion and you know this the rubens asked paul mccartney where'd you get your harmony ideas from the beach boys and the everly brothers yeah I mean, it's like, you know, the Beatles didn't come out of a vacuum here. You know what I mean? The, the, the American, Elvis, all of it, you know, huge influence. And, uh, you they know, just fed it back to us. exactly. Yeah. And, and they didn't just, just like I say, that they didn't just sit in a vacuum and not listen to any records ever and just, you I mean, they're, they had influences. And, yeah, yeah. and, and, you know, and the Beach Boys, they got to be number one. Uh, same. Same. We, 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 I have a feeling they're not number one for you. No, the they Eagles, They didn't even man. make your list. The Eagles. No, the list. How can the Beach Boys not make the list? Uh... So number the, eleven. Honorable yeah, okay. Wait, 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 wait. So the Eagles are your number one? The Eagles are number one. The Eagles are number one. one. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Um, okay. I mean, you kind of think like you were saying with Sergeant Pepper, you know, the, the two albums going back and forth. Yeah. They were making Hotel California while uh, Fleetwood Mac was doing rumors. Right down oh. the so you have these two mega records being made in the same yeah. studio, right? I like that. So I like that. Cool history. And then you know, we talked about the Eagles. You know, each guy's talented in their yeah. own right. Yeah. And yeah. I just saw the Eagles too when they were at PBG Paints Arena. Yeah. Don Henley had a cold, and he still sounded just as good as he did on the records. Like he came out, apologized, "Hey guys, I'm not feeling good tonight, but we're going to get through this." And they played yeah. Hotel California in the entirety, right? And then they came out, played every song that they like, every big hit. It's three hours long. Oh yeah, yeah. They they performed well. Um, you know they survived. You gotta respect that. Yeah, the longevity and I mean if, if you're going just off numbers, yeah, you know, no one has outsold them. And uh, I think I mentioned this last time I was on the show. When you look at just the 20th century, right, in mm -hmm. terms of records, their greatest hits sold more records than any other album released. Yeah, and yeah. And that's a fact. You can't it, it can't be talked because the, the century is over. The century yeah, century is done. Yeah. And what I liked about their music as songwriters. Um, they were storytellers. Yep. You can sit down, listen to their song, and your your mind goes on a journey. Yeah. You're there in Hotel California, or Life in the Fast Lane. Yeah. Or you with you know the Lying Eyes, seeing that whole story unfold. So it was like a theater of the mind. Yeah. And they just struck a nerve in the '70s that everybody loved the, the Eagles, man. They were yeah. like the American Beatles. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, they were together for a short time, put out a lot of great music, and it survived. Yeah. And you. Know, I, I like that. Your know, grandkids are listening to it, and it's just like it's still important today. Yeah. You know, it, 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 no. You can't argue that. Yeah. So yeah. The Eagles number one. I like that. Yeah. Listen, great lists. Yeah, I, I agree. These are some great I, lists. I thought we did pretty well. I, I think we hit some really good. A few curveballs. Yeah. The Ronettes. I'm never. <laughs> I, 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 I wrote it down. Oh, like it. As yeah. soon as he hit with the raw nets, I have to oh, write this down. Don't forget the go -Go's. Yeah, oh, the go go's guys. Our lips are sealed. When I was a kid, I Pretty loved good. the go go's. Yeah, I I did too, and then I, I kind of outgrew them. But it's yeah. like, hey, that, that's an important time. That's yeah, cool. I can't believe it. So I want to talk about a few things. So to get my inspiration going, mm -hmm. I looked up just Google best American bands ever. Yeah, and I found this list from. Uh, ultimateclassicrock.com yeah. and that's where I kind of started and actually number 50 is the Foo Fighters and again I think it's again kind of like you know Dave Matthews' band I'm isn't on here like 49 is the Flaming Lips I, that's kind of weird to me but no you know. sane person yeah. would put the Flaming Lips above the Foo Fighters yeah I, I don't really understand but, that Yeah, I don't really understand that but anyway it, it was my kind of like, like, like inspiration Sure. and I wanted to ask you about a band that every list I looked at had a band called the Pixies on it, and I see he doesn't even know who the Pixies are. 
Yeah, I don't know who they, they are. Be, are they old? Like 60s? I don't. Well, here, let let me find them on on yeah. this list here. But like, what they're song do they sing? like I don't. I I've never heard of this band, the Apixies, and they're on every list. Any any website I find with the you know best American bands, they include this band called the Apixies. And let me see if I can they're, find they're from them. Boston. Here. Aerosmith, Credence, Van Halen. Tom Petty is number two, and then Beach Boys is number one on this list. Oh, so we, we named all those. Yeah. I, the I door. don't even know. Talking that. Heads. I'd love to include the Talking Heads. I don't know one song. Yeah, R.E.M. Eagles. R.E.M. was Steely Dan. Actually, Steely I was, yeah. was going to start with R.E.M. as number 10. Yeah, yeah. R.E.M.'s a great band. Um, but then they just abruptly stopped. And that kind of like... Yeah. Around and, like, and you know, like like... So I want to talk about after I figure out who like the Green Pixies Day are. Could be on. They've been going on for a long time. I wrote Green Day down while we were talking okay. because you mentioned about a live band. Live band. So the Foo Fighters, Green Day, they record live. Now, obviously, they're they're not on a stage. What I mean is yeah. a band. So uh, back in the day, I saw the what was called the Pop Disaster Tour, I believe, and it was the the it was Green Day and. Um, uh, Blink-182, and I love Blink-182, yeah. but Blink-182 records, like a lot of bands, with with a tracking. So Travis goes in, lays down the drums to a, to a click track, and then lays down the bass to a click track, and, and they, then lay, layer they lay it all together, and then yeah. they do all the thing, you know? So they don't actually record it together. Like Phil Collins used to go and record all the drums and then go on vacation, and the band would come in and fill in all the other stuff, right? Yeah. And, but here's the deal, though. Green Day records live, meaning that they're in the studio together and they record all together. So when you go see them live, you're hearing yeah. what they were doing in the studio. The Foo Fighters do the same. Yeah. Green Day was unbelievable. Yeah. Blink sucked because they don't play together. Yeah. They don't record together. They don't create it together. Yeah, it's not organic. It's like not, Andy yeah. Did that too in the early days. Where would you guys have uh, Motley Crue? They wouldn't make the list. Yeah. To no. me, they were the 80s version of Kiss. Yeah. See, I like their music, but it's to but, me, they're not. But for showmanship, yeah. They, they, yeah. they're a 10. Yeah. You know, they put on a good act. Yeah, and they have a lot of hits. They do. You can't. Yeah. You can't All right, so here, I'm going to read this to you. So number 44 of the, on this list is, yeah. is the Pixies. Okay. And I've seen them even higher, like top 10. Boston's Pixies are pretty much the bridge between 80s college rock and 90s indie. Their 1988 debut, Surfer Rosa, set the template to uh, much more to come, including Nirvana's loud, quiet, loud aesthetic uh, that they took to the mainstream just a few years later. So maybe they were kind of like, I guess, a Nirvana precursor. Um, the original quartet. Da, 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 da. Let me just see here if there's any other good uh, bits here. Um, there isn't a new rock band worth their guitars that hasn't been influenced by the Pixies in one way or another. Wow, that's a bold statement. And that's just I. You know what? I I bet to I bet it's one of those bands that if you walk down the street, no one knows. But when it comes to their influence, you know, I was hoping you knew more about oh, them. Yeah. Wow, I've yeah, because they they kept popping up there's on all these lists. There, yeah. That is some yeah. So. Um, so yeah, so I wrote down Green Day. I, I also wrote down Fish, uh, just because like the Grateful Dead, I don't even know if you ever, uh, I mean, they're just, you know, yeah. like I had to teach. So I went to a boarding school and in the dorm for high school and in the dorm, teachers lived in the dorms. So they had a, like, like apartment, like nicer apartments, not like dorm rooms. Like, yeah. and I, there was a math teacher who lived in the dorm that I lived in. And he knew I loved music and I was the drummer and I, you know, and he invited me into his apartment one night and he opened up a cabinet and it was full of, of cassette tapes. And it was like, you know, Fish 92, Fish 93, Fish 94, Fish, Rush 92, right? It was because, so he's one of those guys, you know, Grateful Dead, Grateful Dead, Frank Zappa, who goes to these concerts hooked up with all of his um, recording gear. Okay. And he had hundreds of, cass of cassettes of all of these live performances. So if he wanted to listen to Fish from 93, he could just put it in his, his cassette player. That's interesting. Listen to the whole thing. So you know, growing up, you, you get these like periods of time where there's a band that you think 
like really great because yeah. you're into them. Yeah. yeah. Like your friends or like your immediate friends are into them. Yeah. A band like um like like Blink was a good example. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, but to me, I I think for like a two year run, the Smashing Pumpkins were the biggest band. Oh in the yeah. World. Oh yeah. And you're just like, oh, that this is gonna be. Yeah. Now they didn't really. They had a good little run there, but they're not yeah. the longevity. No. Yeah. No. They put out two good albums. Hey, one great album. as you know, there are some bands who they 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 get one, they get one, yeah. and then they're gone. Yeah, which is why what what makes the Grateful Dead, like we said, so great is they had the one hit, but they it, they still relevant. They didn't need hits. Yeah. They were a, yeah. They had a following no matter what. Yeah, very interesting. But well, you know, that's like Hootie and the Blowfish. Yeah, you, Hootie like, and the Blowfish. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, wow. they had one big record, sold ten million records, and then that was it. And that was done. They were it done. Was a huge record. Yeah. In the 90s. yeah. Oh yeah. That, you still hear that song. Dan Marino, wasn't yeah. he in the video? Yeah, because they were big sports fans. Yeah. Were, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So other bands, other bands that came up a lot on these lists that I was kind of looking at, yeah. obviously the Talking Heads. Sure. Yeah. Um, Journey. Yeah, Journey. Journey. You know, I mean. When you go to karaoke, everyone knows that. You gotta, Jovi, you gotta probably. do Bon Jovi, Chicago, Boston. Yeah. I think Chicago, phenomenal. I mean, think about a band. Every one of their albums is called Chicago. Yeah, Chicago, one, two, three. Like we don't need Kansas. You know what? I didn't even think about Kansas. Oh my God! I've they're great band. I was thinking the Cars. Okay. Oh, they're on. They're on. Okay. They're on the lists. Okay, that was. My number twelve band. Okay. Yeah, the Cars. I, I was like, you know, this is a ten list. Yeah, twelve list. But the Cars were that yeah. new wave sound, man. Yeah, you know? yeah. The cars were very unique. Awesome. But you can go like you could say like the Carpenters. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. yeah. You know, even like Earth, Wind, and Fire. Earth, Wind, yeah. and Fire. Stuff like that. The Temptation. Yeah. 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 But they were a group. They didn't really play an instrument. Well, see, th see, this is kind of like you know you have to. Uh, that's why we had a set like parameters, like the Temptations, but they're not really a band. They're they're they they're, like they're, they're they're actually a, a boy band to be, you know. Yeah. They're a singing group, you know. Um, the Beatles were a boy band too, but yeah, but they played they instruments. Played, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Um, Leonard Skinnerd. Yeah, you know uh, the band, but again, I think I think we, we talked about that, but they're kind of a you know Leonard, a hybrid. They're, they're, they're no more originality. Yeah, you know they're all. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you know, they're all like yeah. relatives. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know guns mean? and Guns and Roses, Cheap Trick, and then obviously a, a lot. You know, you know, we kind of set our rules here, like to not include like a Hall and Oates. Yeah, because they're not really a band; they're a, a, a duo. Like Steely Dan, they're yeah. a studio band. You know, they they record with certain musicians, yeah. then go on the road with other musicians. Simon and Garfunkel, I love Simon and Garfunkel, yeah. but. They're not really a band, right? Right. You know what I mean? They're uh, songwriters, singers, and then they they have, you know, no name musicians who. Our you know, number one didn't make his list. That that to me, you well, know. Honestly, I knew it was going to make your list. Yeah. So I was trying, to, have, trying to be a little. Yeah, different. I don't want to have this because we have talked about that before, and I yeah, I thought the Beach Boys were going to be your number one or number two. So yeah. I, was like, I need one. to be a little bit different because you got to make the show. It's yeah. Very, you're right. Uh, yeah. You're right. So I knew yeah. these boys were going to be safe. Yeah. No, you're well, right. you know, I think it's just kind of, you know, it's like the greatest band of all time is the Beatles, like, on every single list ever. But there's a reason for that. Because yeah. really the influence of these bands is so astronomical that... Um, you know, the Beatles went for nine years, right? Yeah. yeah. But their nine years were, like... Changed music forever. Their nine years were, were was just no dips. Yeah. You know, it was just... It was just boom, boom, boom. Yeah, they right. they released like two albums like a year. It was just boom, just it just it, it was a concentrated. The other day, I heard a concentrated. Thing with, uh, Paul yeah. McCartney. He's talking about. Oh, it was an old interview with Howard Stern. Okay. And he was talking about um, who was their old ban their manager? Brian Epstein. You know he was um, he was gay. gay and he killed himself. Yeah. Right. All right. And, and then they went on. Uh, he was talking about how you know John went on holiday with 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 him. And there were rumors that they, they got together and all yeah. that stuff. And Paul said, listen, you know how many times we crashed in the same room as a band? Yeah. Not one time did I see a 
homosexual yeah. tendency from John. And then he was going on with Howard about, you know, you know how John wanted to just like, like they were done, and then I, John wanted to be, you know, keep going. Okay. Okay. This is before John and Yoko. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was before that, and he goes. Oh, then you know John would just get in the room and, and knock the hit out in ten minutes, and yeah. then he'd go play it. Yeah, and he goes, "Okay, now we got another album." Yeah, like you, like it was nothing. Yeah, yeah. Like they were just able to write a song. It's in minutes. it's like the Bee Gees. Like yeah. I think they went to France and wrote Saturday yeah. Night Fever in like a weekend. It's ridiculous, yeah. or something like like that. I mean, yeah, and like even thing like Phil Collins, right? Th the songs that he's written, yeah. I mean, whether it's Disney or not, or, or Genesis, like, he's or... He's a goat. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's, and he's, plus, he's good enough to play, and like, so like, the like Buddy Rich big band mm -hmm. still exists. Obviously, Buddy Rich has been dead for a long time. Yeah. So, the drummer is, is just a rotating seat of great drummers. Yeah. And, but, and Phil Collins has played with the Buddy Rich band, and like, you watch these YouTube videos of him playing these extremely fast and complicated jazz tunes. No problem. And you would never think... You know, he's out there singing, yeah. you know, Susu -su Studio, and and he... Which nobody still knows what it means. And who, who knows? <laughs> who knows? But the guy's like a hit machine, yeah. you know? It's just so so interesting. The, yeah. the best thing about Phil Collins is he played Lime Aid yeah. in London, got on the Concord, and flew to New York, and still played live. Wow. Like, that's an accomplishment. I, yeah. Yeah. Because he was so big, they wanted him to do both. To play in both audiences. Yeah. I mean, you're a big deal. Yeah. If they were like, and get on the Concord and make it. Yeah. That's like back in time. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Think about that. From the future. So, yeah. Right Phil there, Collins. Man. Yeah. You thought you were yeah. seeing him play again. Yeah. Like this, they, they put it on loop. Yeah. No, he was in New York. That's unbelievable. That's, un that's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. He's a freak. Yeah. So apparently, speaking of like American bands and artists, there's this new movie coming out about Elvis. Yes. With yeah. Tom Hanks's Colonel Tom. Austin Curtis is his name. Yeah. And uh, apparently he got like a 10 minute standing ovation yeah. at like Cannes. Well, really? guess what? You know why? Why? Priscilla was sitting next to him. What do you think they're going to do, boo? So I was thinking about this. And listen, it's kind of weird to see these guys in like tuxedos, like hugging themselves over a good movie. Like it's. I know. It's like back like in oh I don't know I don't know it was like I guess it was during the recession like oh like oh like oh eight or something, um, what's his name Billy Crystal was like hosting the the Oscars yeah I don't know if it was oh eight I don't remember but he just had this thing the economy like wasn't doing great people were struggling you know Billy Crystal comes out and says wow a night of watching millionaires give each other golden statues. It's kind of this like, <laughs> yeah. this like they're patting themselves on the back for being like movie stars, and, like making a great film. And I guess that is an accomplishment, but this movie gets, you know, a 10 minute standing ovation. And you're right. Yeah. You got the guy who, who Austin, what? The guy, Elvis, yeah, the guy who plays Elvis, yeah. then Tom Hanks. He does kind of look like Elvis. And then, and then the, 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 the goat herself, like the one that, Elvis chose. Yeah. You know what like I mean? Is right like, there. Priscilla still looks like she's 35. Yeah, exactly. Like, how could it be? Yeah. Yeah. Now, now we know. Yeah. We, yeah. We've always had this. This thing about this her. This thing about why. Her. Elvis could have any woman yeah. in the world. In the world. In the world. Royalty, it doesn't yeah, matter. Doesn't Queen matter. Elizabeth. Yeah. Any woman. Do whoever you wanted. Yeah. He chose Priscilla. A 14-year-old girl. Yeah. yeah. Why? Why Priscilla? Why Priscilla? What makes her so special? We yeah. always wonder. He's like, I'm going to grow old with you, and you're still going to look like you're 35. Exactly, yeah. 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 Lisa Marie looks like Priscilla's mom. Yes. Yeah. And you know, her son looks just like Elvis. I know. I mean, if they wanted to have someone who looks just like Elvis, it's they could have cast him. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's like really crazy. Is that going in theaters, or is that streaming? I have no idea. I'll watch it because yeah. I'm an Elvis fan. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, we were talking about does he look like Elvis, does he not look like Elvis? He does a little bit, but he's also a singer. Young, young, young. He's Elvis. young, yeah. a young Elvis. Yeah. But he's also a singer. So I think it was this combination of we don't really need a look alike per se. That's he looks cool. enough like him yeah. and he can actually sing. So even though they use Elvis's real voice, okay. they also incorporate Oh, they use Elvis's voice. Oh yeah. 
with, yeah, so I'm, he, they, it's not him singing. Well, they they do a little like a little bit of both. Okay. Like Rami Malek yeah. in in the in, in Freddie, they used a little bit. Not that he can sing like Freddie Mercury, but well, nobody could. Yeah, exactly. But they they didn't always use Freddie's voice for every single thing. It, it was right. it kind of depended on, and they also used. Um, they also used that guy, I forget his name, who sounds just like Freddie Mercury. There's a guy, his name's Mark something. He, I think he's from Canada. It doesn't matter. He literally, it, it is the closest you're ever going to hear to Freddie Mercury's voice. I think they also used him. Because here's the deal. When you make a movie, you know, and you show them like recording in the studio. So is it like a bioepic? It like yeah, it's, it's literally Elvis' I think whole whole, whole career. Arc. Okay. I think wow. it's his whole career. That's I mean I, I mean I don't I don't I don't know if they're gonna put him in a fat suit for the fat Elvis era, but yeah. I'm there I mean it, it's all the all What's the it? major parts. Elvis could come out seven hundred pounds. Yeah, people people, yeah. people still scream. Panties yeah. would have still been thrown yeah. on the stage. Yeah, yeah. Elvis. He was Elvis. Yeah. yeah. He's the one he wanted. And I think it's gonna be like I don't wanna see you know how you know what you know what I didn't like about that Elton John movie? It was like a musical. Yeah, I didn't see it. I didn't watch it either. Like the, the Queen one was good. Yeah, but like what I didn't like about the um, the Elton John one, it was a musical in a way that they used his music like a musical uses music. So mm. when you're writing a musical, uh, like Mel Brooks, you know the I love Mel Brooks. the the uh, the uh, producers, yeah. one of the greatest Broadway shows ever. Yeah. yeah. And he said when you when you when you're writing a musical, you have to take your best scene. And make it music. So you might have written a great, a great scene, great dialogue, and you realize that's a number. And so what the Elton John movie did is like him as a young kid and his dad and mom would all of a sudden start singing an Elton John song that oh, hasn't even been like hasn't even been like written yet. So it was like a musical. Yeah, I didn't yeah, like that. Yeah, it wasn't. It it was a biopic, but it the was timeline a, didn't work. No, it was a very they bizarre. Break out his, like, yeah, song and they, they have literally in the kitchen or something. Literally. Yeah. No. I'm like, why couldn't they have just done? But it, it makes me think. What did we talk about the other day? Why did they redo Mary Poppins? Exactly. Yeah. But, but leave Mary Poppins alone. A lot of the new Disney stuff, because Disney basically owns Broadway now. They're like every Frozen movie. It's designed to be like the Frozen music was written by Broadway composers. There's a reason for that because they want to put it on Broadway. They want to make money forever. So when I saw, yeah, <laughs> yeah, when I saw that Elton John movie, to me it looked like it's going to be on the West End, you know, or and like Broadway event. Like yeah, they they they, they, they want to make yeah. an Elton John musical. So let's put out the movie and basically, yeah, 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 and see yeah. if we can get it on Broadway. Yeah, See it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But but the the um Queen movie was much more of a straightforward yeah. biopic. Well, a little bit of a little false. I that about like how they were like a strain. They weren't. The, I don't know. Why do they have to do that though? Because it's not true. It's, yeah. It's not true. It's, it wasn't they, it, it's not history. They they created strife for drama. Yeah, but like I know movies have to have a beginning, middle, and end, a first act, second act, third act. I know there's this whole like story arc thing but but that's not that's just not true i thought when that movie was going to come out it would end with like the um the tribute concert the yeah concert for freddie yeah and that would be like the end and, like, yeah because you know elton came out and uh, yeah you know uh guns and roses, uh, Axel roses. Axel yeah, yeah, yeah 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 it was like this whole thing and and uh you know uh ozzy's drummer or guitarist Plays lefty handed. I don't know. I'm so, thinking of Randy, but no, not Randy. Randy no, yeah. no, no, the other one, the one that chopped his fingertips off. Mm, I'm driving by. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he come out. You know, I yeah. thought, okay, they're gonna have some. That would be the the proper. Ending. Yeah, yeah. It's like a crescendo ending. Sure, yeah. You know, and then after that, uh, you know, the their bassist never like he he's never been like seen since. Oh, Queen. Yeah. Oh, he he he, he did. He went, he he did not take Freddie's death well, yeah. and he just John Deacon, I think is his name. Yeah, yeah. He John. just went, just he did that the tribute, and then he did like a small venue, like a couple months after, and that's the last live thing he's ever done. Yeah, apparently, people see him around like uh, London sometimes, like just 
Yeah. Doing his thing, but he, he's yeah, he's he not he's he there's no John Deacon band or there's yeah, no I'll playing on other people's guys. Isn't that something? He's done. I mean, if you think about it, they captured lightning in a bottle with yeah. Freddie Mercury and Queen yeah. and good, nothing you're ever gonna do. Is, not gonna pop it. Yeah, nothing you're yeah. ever gonna do is going to top Queen. Uh he doesn't have to work, you know, like he gets residuals. Queen is Still a very well liked and popular band, yeah. yeah. And uh, he Good. can he can just kind of chill out, you know. And uh, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I love music. I, I mean, it's just yeah. We can talk about bands all day. Oh you, yeah. You ever seen the movie Almost Famous? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. back. Yeah. yeah. Not that's since one of my favorite movies. About not since it, it. Not since it came yeah. out back in the day. Pro was a uh, rock journalist. Right? Yeah. And then he became a movie director, but. That's a great movie. Yeah, I'll have to rewatch yeah. that. It's worth it, yeah. Yeah, I'll have to rewatch that for sure. But Maybe we'll do um, another show where we talk about like live acts or um, bands that have passed or, or no yeah. longer together. Well, like Queen would be. Yeah, like, I if mean, I wanted to see a live act. Like yeah, if, if you queen. if you could go back, yeah. Oh, I would want to see Freddie Mercury yeah. live. I that would be my number. I, I want to hear his voice, yeah. Yeah. his real voice. I mean, obviously you can watch the live aid and it's not, but but yeah. in person, I would love yeah. to hear in his command of an audience. I don't think anyone's ever had that kind of a command. He can yeah. just whatever he he said went like whatever he did with the audience, just un unbelievable, just a really unbelievable talent. And uh, he, his, you know, studying this stuff in school, his his anatomy was just freakish. Yeah, he had freakish anatomy. Yeah, his teeth, right? So yeah, his teeth. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he never got it fixed because it would most likely change his his ability to yeah. us to to sing the way that he sang. Yeah, and uh, that just that doesn't come around often. Yeah, but you got to look up this guy. I think his first name is Mark. Mark Martell, I think, or something like that. Mark Martell sounds like a wrestler. Yeah, I know, right? He is, like, it, really, he should be the front man for Queen, not Brian Lampert or whatever his name yeah. is. However, I understand why they chose him, because, I don't know if he won American Idol, but he was part of American Idol, and he yeah. kind of is... Oh, Adam Lampert. Or, or Adam Lampert. He, yeah. You know, kind of a flashy I guy. No, I mean, he, he can hit all the notes, yeah. but he doesn't sound like Freddie Mercury. This guy... Literally, I don't. It's incredible how much he sounds. It's like just like Freddie Mercury. You're the guy that took over for Steve Perry. Yeah, for Journey. I was just gonna mention that. You know, they saw him playing YouTube videos, singing like Journey, and they're like, "This, this is our new guy. It sounds just like, like that, that, like hair. that, like yeah. that, like Filipino guy." No no, 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 no. There was a guy. Oh, that's who I'm before up. him. Oh no. Yes, and that's who I saw when I saw Journey. Yeah, he was incredible. He sounds just like Steve Perry. Well, which is well, it's kind of hard to do because Steve Perry is one of the greatest yeah vocalists ever. Yeah, but his voice was 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 freakish. It was amazing, it was freakish. Yeah, yeah. But the, and then they now they have this Filipino guy yeah. who's really great too. Yeah, I see a guy on TikTok or on like social media who looks like Steve Perry and sings just like him. It's probably a deep fake. Yeah. No, no, no. It, this is the... Because I've looked up his, like, band. Okay. He just right. has that, like, same look. That's crazy how some people look like a celebrity, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. And they sound like him. And it's, it's yeah. 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 It's really something. Well, guys, what do you think? I think... I, I yeah. think those were... That was good. Chris, thank you for... Yeah. Thanks for... You know, I happen to notice on the Lexus, you have, you're advertising now. Like, this is... Well, listen. Oh, yeah. Did you see that? I did, yeah. I pulled so, it I'm like, damn, okay. So we got to get some coffee. Yeah. Now. So yeah. Jason was, you know, I was like, he's like, where are our business cards? And listen, I well, moved. They're going to be the Lizard King, right? Yeah. Cards, yeah. Well, I have business cards <laughs> off, off for the show. And he goes, do you have any? And I was like, oh, I don't know where they are. And... He goes, well, go to this place called Fast Signs, which Jason uh, uses. Buddy of mine owns that franchise. Yeah, okay. and it's just down the street. Yeah. And um, I was in there, and I was like, you know, I'm going to get some business cards. And uh, I thought you were going to put it on the glass. Okay, so uh, you can't because of the but wiper. I, but this worked out better. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Thing I saw when I pulled in here. Yeah. And, you know, I asked him. I don't know if Jason, Jason, hey, why don't you get the website on your car? It came up somehow. And I was like, well, I want to put the website on my car somewhere. And I'm like, what are my options? And he's like, well, we can fully wrap your vehicle. 
I'm like, okay, I'm, let's pump the brakes here. <laughs> Let, how much is that? Eight thousand. Yeah, what? <laughs> let's go a little lower. Yeah. Can you just we put need a sponsor? Yeah. Can right? you just put it, you know, here? And actually, I was going to put it under the license plate, but then when the guy came out, like the installer, you know, he had just some masking tape, and we like moved it around, and really, that's where it kind of fits. It fits. Yeah. It looks good. It looks, it really yeah. Does. It catches your eye. Like, yeah. I agree. And it doesn't interfere with the sensors or anything. Yeah. Now, he, I asked him about car washes, and he goes, well, you know, if, you, a, if you ask 3M who makes the thing, they're going to say no car No, like, you know, yeah. you can I'm wash like, your car. I'm no, like Ralph running through the wash for it. Yeah. No, like, automatic car washes, yeah. you know. But he goes, they have a fully wrapped vehicle in, like, the, in like, the, like Jurassic Park thing. Okay. He goes, I take that through the wash. I'm like, okay. So, you know. But yeah, yeah, yeah. They have. I don't. Have you ever been where where the where the Jimmy Johns and, and Panera is? Yeah, where Dive Bar is. Yeah, yeah Dive Bar. Where they got the cockroaches? Yeah. Yeah, it's called cockroaches. cockroaches. You know that? Yeah, the Dive Bar and the Thai restaurant. Uh, oh. Are for having cockroaches. Oh, that's oh, not ideal. Man. No, so be careful. This oh. was like a month ago. Oh. Really? Yeah, they got the cockroaches. I was yeah. thinking about getting I'm, some. I'm serious about that too. I'm not getting any Thai food. I'll tell you that yeah. one. I'll have the cockroach pad thai. <laughs> number <laughs> number two spicy. This is a whole nother. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to go over like health inspection reports? Yeah, today? exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if that car is I don't know who drives that car, but if you go there during the day, it's like actually if you, mine. I park it there. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> So it's a, I don't even know what, what, it's a Jeep. I don't even know what kind of car it is. I can't tell. No, I can't. No, no, you can't tell because it's wrapped like those, I don't know what it is. Those like Jurassic Park vehicles from the movie. So it looks like it's from the movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it says Jurassic Park on it. It's fully wrapped. Yeah. Yeah. I see it driving sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Like around. I feel like now I have. Yeah. 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 Oh, so it must be someone's car. I mean, maybe it's that installer's car. Maybe, he's, Chris, maybe it's Chris's. Maybe it's Chris's. Oh, yeah. No, the, no, the, no, the, guy, the, owns the guy who owns it, his name's Chris also. Oh. Maybe he drives it around. We now have... He thinks he's... Uh, so... Who's the, who's the guy from Pittsburgh that's in the, 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 the Jurassic Park? Jeff Goldblum. Goldblum. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. It's his personal vehicle. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. We're in the car. He's talking about Chris wants to do a show... Is it, but we we have a new friend, Chris, okay. who just moved here from Scranton, who was on last week's show. Okay. So he's talking about, I'm like, what are you talking about? And he goes, oh, no, no, the bands, Chris from Lexus. I'm like, <laughs> dude, you got to, I'm thinking, gotta I'm like, why does this other guy want, you know what I mean? He was just on the show. He goes, hasn't been on the show in a while. I'm like, Jay, five days ago, he was on the show. I was so confused. Because you know? I see Chris every day. I know, yeah. You know, so yeah, like, uh, it's, it's it's very confusing. But yeah, let's wrap it up. Yeah, guys, this was really fantastic. Yeah, Chris, thank you so me. much. And we'll see you next time on the Michael Papinchak Show. Uh -huh.